The following is a PCN Sports presentation. from Eagle View Middle School here in Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania as we get set for the PIAA 2A Boys Soccer Championship between the Camp Hill Lions and the Quaker Valley Quakers. Hi everyone, alongside Brian Kaiser, I'm Ari Bluestein. Thank you for joining us here on PCN. And Brian, you've got a team from District 3 in Camp Hill, a team from District 7 in Quaker Valley, both runners up in their respective districts in the playoffs. But that doesn't matter once you get to the state championship tournament because all you've got to do is win your games in front of you and you've got an opportunity to win state gold. These two teams have done that before. Camp Hill back in 2016 and 2017 at the single A level and Quaker Valley's won it nine times all at the double A level. This should be an outstanding matchup. There you see the Camp Hill Lions. They are led by head coach Justin Schaefer in his 11th season. A really talented team and some really good players up front, but also in the midfield as well. And one of those guys we're going to be seeing all day is going to be number 10, Cole Nelson, the senior with 10 goals, 19 assists. He's a first-team all-division. He's the guy who sets the table on offense. They've got some real speed up front, but he's the guy who gets them going, also gives them their identity, is that physical presence. Justin Schaefer says, that he's been so important to linchpin to this team all season long. And the Quaker Valley Quakers, they have a lot of experience. Head coach J.J. Vescio in his fourth season, and they also have a very good midfielder. And you've got Nick Allen. He's also a senior number 31. You see him right there in the front there. 18 goals, 16 assists with section player of the year, all WPIAL this season in the state playoffs so far. He's got three goals, four assists. He's been fantastic. He takes all of their free kicks, their corners, their penalty kicks. He's a do everything kind of guy and he's going to be very important to their attack lots of playoff experience here on the field who will get that trophy we'll find out coming up in just a few minutes we'll have starting lineups when we return you're watching the 2023 piaa two-way boys soccer championship here on pcn For over 35 years, the Emmy Award-winning Weather World has provided in-depth statewide forecasts that you won't find anywhere else. Weather World gives you more than just tomorrow's weather. They offer long-range forecasts and unique content that answers the why, as well as the what, when, and how weather will affect your life. Weather World, from the Penn State Department of Meteorology and Atmospheric Science. Weekdays at 545 and available for free on the PCN app. PCN brings you the PIAA championships in a variety of sports. From the field to the pool and the court to the track, PCN brings you the best scholastic teams competing on the state's biggest stage from all the best angles. With multiple cameras, instant replay, and professional commentary, we take high school sports and elevate them to new heights. Watch on cable and the PCN app. PCN, proud to bring Pennsylvania sports to you. Welcome back here to Eagle View Middle School alongside Brian Kaiser, Amari Bluestein. And as we get set for the announcement of the starting lineups, you know, we talked about the really good midfielders on both of these teams, but there are some really good forwards up front on both sides as well. And some hot forwards as well. On the Camp Hill side, you've got number 14, Ty Kirchhoff. He's a junior, 29 goals on the season, and he has gotten red hot here in the state playoffs. Hat trick in their first round game against Granton Prep, and the game winning goals against both Northwestern Lehigh in the quarters and Blue Mountain in the semifinals. On the other side for Quaker Valley, you've got number nine, also a junior, Jack Karwaski. 20 goals on the season, also 13 assists, and he had the one and only goal against Central Columbia in their semifinal game. Also had hat trick back in that first round game against Bedford. He's a guy who has been very sharp as well. If either of these teams is going to really put up that high-powered attack, those are the guys that most likely will be the start of it. All right, looks like we are ready to go. We'll turn it over to our public address announcer for starting lineups for this championship game. Teams.
This afternoon's championship contest will match the District 3 runner-up Lions of Camp Hill and the District 7 runner-up Quakers of Quaker Valley. Let's meet today's starting lineups. The teams are being led onto the field by our championship officials, Akaleo L. Huntington, Todd M. Fisher, and David McKnight. First, the visiting team of Camp Hill. The Lions represent PIAA District 3 and enter today's game with a record of 22 and 2. Number one, a senior, in goal, Mac Sarf. Number four, a sophomore, Miller Nelson. Number seven, a junior, Lorenzo Lici. Number 10, a senior, Cole Nelson. Number 11, a senior, Jack Kennedy. Number 14, a junior, Ty Kershoff. Number 15, a sophomore, Ian Gamber. Number 17, a junior, Reese Good. Number 20, a sophomore, Ethan Chamash. Number 22, a senior, Richard Lutkins. And number 30, a sophomore, Benjamin Dade. The Lions are coached by Just Justin Schaefer and assisted by Matt Earhart, Kyle Bentz, and Jerry Hoy. Now let's meet the home team of Quaker Valley. The Quakers represent PIAA District 7 and enter the game with a record of 20 and 4. Number 1, a junior, in goal, Nathan Prebick. Number 4, a senior, Bennett Hawes. Number 6, a senior, Kirill Grin. Number 8, a sophomore, Sutton Hale. Number nine, a junior, Jack Karwaski. Number 10, a senior, Cameron Diggins. Number 17, a senior, Matteo Castellini. Number 21, a junior, Andrew Vecchio. Number 24, a junior, Carter Turk. Number 26, a sophomore, Tanner Schultz. And number 31, a senior, Nick Allen. The Quakers are coached by J.J. Vecchio and assisted by Sean Ryan, Dom Lagnis, and David Lipton. Ladies and gentlemen, we now ask that you please rise and remove your caps for the singing of our national anthem by Carmelina Smith of Plymouth White Marsh High School. Ladies and gentlemen, our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight O'er the ramparts we watched Were so gallantly streaming And the rocket's rap glare The bombs bursting That our flag was still there Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave O'er the land of the free And the
And we are ready to go for this 2023 PIAA 2A Boys Soccer Championship. As you just heard, the starting lineup for the Camp Hill Lions out of District 3 and the Quaker Valley Quakers out of District 7. As we take a look at the goalkeeper matchup here, Brian, you have two really good keepers who have not given up a ton of goals this year. Yeah, you look at right there, that's the... Quaker Valley keeper Nathan Privick. He's a junior. 13 shutouts on the season. Actually was in a competition at the beginning of the year uh, with the coach's son, Xander Vescio, who had a really good training camp. But as the season wore on, Privick stepped forward and became and the starting goalie and has really played extremely well in the playoffs. On the Camp Hill side of things, there's Max Sarf, and that's a guy who a year ago kind of struggled in his first year as a starter, learned his way, and man, did he improve in the offseason, get a lot better this season, and Max Sarf, 16 shutouts on the season for Camp Hill, second team all division, and 13 goals against the entire season. He's a guy who really has become an excellent shot stopper for this Camp Hill team, a very stingy defense on both sides. And you look at this Camp Hill team, there you see Nathan Pribick for Quaker Valley. Quaker Valley, they've got a lot of experience. We talked about it, winning state titles in 2019, 2021. You've got some repeat players here from that 21 championship. Uh, Camp Hill, very physical team, obviously, running through the gauntlet of District 3. And, you know, Whippeal, we talked to Coach Vescio. Whippeals were very emotional, and they were tough. That that title loss to South Park for Quaker Valley was tough for them, but they kind of got back to what got them to that point is getting back to basics and playing good soccer. Exactly, and we're underway here in the state championship game, and the, these two teams, uh, you're going to see two teams that do maybe a little bit different things. Right there, you're going to see in the white Camp Hill, very physical team in the midfield most of the time. Quaker Valley, it's a team that's very technically sound, a team that really wants to use the width of this pitch here today to try to spread things out and really stay away from that sort of physicality. Are these one of, is this one of these games, Brian, where you think maybe one goal might do it because of the way that both of these defenses and keepers play? It's possible. Uh, it's it's uh, when you've got two teams like this coming in that are not necessarily familiar with each other. They haven't played each other for a long, long time. They, back in 2005 playoffs, they played against each other. But these players weren't going to remember anything like that because they weren't bored in that time. <laughs> so they, this is going to be a, a very feel-out kind of period, but they're coming right after it. Good push by Quaker Valley, and it will be a goal kick. Nice job there on the far side by Carter Turk for a good push. And that's something that the Quaker Valley will do with Carter Turk. He will come and he will be as the right back. He will play forward a lot more than his compadre on the other side, Sutton Hale. Turk gets into the attack. After the goal kick, Quaker Valley still trying to push towards the attacking third. Good battle. And now Camp Hill comes out of it. Leachy. Up ahead it goes to Cole Nelson. We talked about Nelson. Now the big goal scorer, Ty Kirchhoff. Trying to get past the defense, and it's deflected, and it goes into the short hands of Nathan Privick. Yeah, no problem for Privick there. Always good to get a touch early, as you see Ty Kirchhoff. He's been red hot so far in the state playoffs for Camp Hill. Five goals so far in the states. 29 on the year, 12 assists. Certainly a guy that Camp Hill will look for down in the attacking third. Here he is up in the midfield, surrounded by three black jerseys, and that will be a throw-in for the Lions. And you're just going to see early on how both teams try to figure out what the other team wants to do. You can, you can get some ideas on film. You can get some ideas from having people uh, tell you what the other team likes to do in the scouting report. But it's a different thing to come out here with the nerves of a state championship game and then try to figure it out on the fly, too. Throw in looking for Kirchhoff right there, but good defense by Quaker Valley to just allow that to go over the end line. There you see Carter Turk, who very uh, physical player, does a lot of really good things right, both ends of the pitch. Yeah, if, as a right back, has six goals and four assists on the season. So, again, he's a guy who will play back, but it will also get forward in the attack and give that extra player that maybe some teams don't include in their attack. Nice job by Quaker Valley making a run here. Karwaski, and we'll have our first 
set piece opportunity of the day as Karwaski creating that pretty much on his own. And this is a pretty good spot for a direct. Let's we'll take a look at it. Yeah, no question. This is a great location. This is a place where you can make a run near post, but really that back post is a very dangerous place. And Nick Allen on the free kicks is a pinpoint specialist on these. Allen back post. Oh, and it goes over the keeper and into the goal. A shocker to start this championship game. Just misread by Max Sarf and Nick Allen with the goal floats it over the outstretched arm of Max Sarf. That's the difficult part about that specific free kick because you have a location where it could be a shot, but it also looks like it could be across from the back post. There wasn't a great deal of pressure from the backside. Here's the foul on Leachy that sets this thing up, bumps him from the backside, no question of foul, and then Nick Allen steps up. Goal number 19 of the season for Allen as he just goes back post, and really, Sarf just came out overly aggressively, and it goes over his fingertips for the opening tally. Well placed by Allen and Quaker Valley on the board first here in the opening four minutes. And now how does Camp Hill respond? They have a very big crowd here since the proximity of Camp Hill and Cumberland Valley very close by. But now they're going to need to really settle themselves back into this game. Well, quickly a corner kick earned for Camp Hill. It'll be Jack Kennedy to take Ka Jack Kennedy, excuse me, to take this for the Lions. Watch number 22, Richard Lutkins, very good in the air, right to the middle, and it goes off the back of a Quaker Valley Quaker, and then Kennedy tried to send it, it back in, and the Quakers clear to the midfield. Haas controlling. Trying to cross it far side, but sent away by Reese Good. Yeah, there's plenty of time for Camp Hill. I mean, obviously you give up a goal like that. It's kind of a gut punch, but I mean, such a good coach, Justin Schaefer. He knows how to get his team back into this game. He does, but the MO so far this season for beating Camp Hill, they've lost three games. They lost their initial game to Middletown. First game of the season, gave up an opening goal within the first five minutes. Gave up a goal very early to Fleetwood in the district championship game for District 3. And now an early goal here against Quaker Valley. They hope history doesn't repeat itself. A good run by Lorenzo Leachy. Great battle here. A foul is called. A little too much contact there from Castellini. Good defense. Just a little bit too much. Castellini is that hard-nosed defensive midfielder that every team wants to have. That guy who, once they get approaching the, the offensive third, he's going to get right in somebody's back, not allow them to turn. Gives up what could be a dangerous free kick. This is a little bit, the angle's a little bit tougher here. And with a right-footed kicker, not much of a threat to score here. Yeah, it'll be Reese Good. Low line drive and sent into the air by Carter Tuck of Quaker Valley. Sent all the way down. Speeding down the fields, Quaker Valley far side. I believe that was Sutton Hale making a good run for that. Actually, excuse me, no, that was Kirill Grin. So we'll have a throw in far side. Yeah, Kirill Grin. Very dangerous player over on that right flank. 17 goals, 13 assists, an all-section player this year for J.J. Vecchio's squad. And this should be handled by Sarf. And that has to make him feel a little bit, settle some nerves that he probably has right now, getting a touch after the opening goal. Sarf with the high punt. You want that next one to be an easy one, honestly, after after you give up the opening goal. Now giving chase here down the near side is Ethan Shamash. But good defense by Quaker Valley. Tanner Schultz got to it first. And I think we have a handball. We're gonna no, say I was just saying it was out. I was going to say it was out. Last touch by Jack Kennedy. And by the way, our officiating crew out of District 10, Dave McKnight, Todd Fisher, and Akileo Huntington. They're not happy with where the throw-in happened, so they're going to bring it right back. Throw-in goes to Haas, now grabbing it. Karwaski. 
And Quaker Valley will play it back. We always have to remember there's not just two championship squads out there on the field right now. A third one because that's a, a really a feather in the cap for the referee crew as well that's out there. An honor for them to be in the championship game. Good defense by Camp Hill, but they're not out of the woods yet. Touch to the far side. Good little move by Carter Turk. And sent away to the midfield by the Camp Hill Lions. Yeah, the book on Quaker Valley, especially in the offensive third, because they're a very technical team. They want to get the ball wide. They want to spread the field, and they will to take guys on one-on-one. -on -one. You saw a little bit out, out of Turk trying to make some moves, trying to get around his man. Good job by Kirchhoff to take it away for the moment. Now with it is Benjamin Dade. Played back to good. Camp Hill trying to get out of the midfield. Good touch right there. And a little bit too far for Miller Nelson, who is up there. And it'll be gathered by Nathan Pribick. Pribick yet, really yet to be tested. If the crowd didn't really like that contact from Nick Allen. Whistle is silent. Thought made contact there with Leachy. Thought about it, though, and thought that maybe he was playing advantage, and that's why he didn't blow the whistle, but it did not end up being the case. Camp Hill trying to generate some scoring chances. They've had a couple of set-piece opportunities. They had the corner. They had a direct kick, but nothing doing yet. Down 1-0 here, Quaker Valley with the early goal by Nick Allen in the fourth minute. That will have a substitution for Camp Hill the game as Miller Camp Nelson Hill, will exit and J.J. Battisti, the senior midfielder, will come in. Kirchhoff trying to head that, looking for Shamaj, but if it goes out of bounds, it'll be a throw-in for the Quakers. Camp Hill will stay in their 4-3-3, but what they'll do with Battisti in the game was they'll move Lorenzo Leachy up to the front line to join the attack and then Battisti will add into the midfield area. Yeah, Lorenzo Lici, dangerous goal scorer as well. Ten goals, ten assists on the year. we got a dangerous play here. It's going to give Camp Hill a free kick. Yeah, we'll take one more look at it. Yep. That's dangerous, all right. Just a little bit. Bennett Haas, the guilty party for Quaker Valley. Kennedy got around him, and that's what made it a dangerous play. Reese Good, line drive going right to goal and going up to get it is Nathan Primick. And that's very similar, but just a little bit further out than what Allen did as Reese Good put that ball in a dangerous spot and the keeper had to be up to the task. Now racing down the far side was Jake Karwaski. And one more look here. Yeah, that's, that's spinning to the near side. Pribick saw that the entire way, though, and really was not dangered by it. They didn't get enough pressure in front of him to make him worry about things. Right, you saw Shamash maybe making a run, but yeah, not a ton of pressure. Meanwhile, here's some pressure from Quaker Valley, and a good cross, and it's sent away. That was all started by Sutton Hale. Near side. Now into the box, and it's sent away by Camp Hill, but now pushing forward is Tanner Schultz. And it's sent out of bounds. It will be a throw-in for the Lions, actually, deflected off of the Quakers. It's something the Quakers do a nice job. That last play, that cross to the middle, they'll bring their attacking mids. That time Cameron Diggins making a nice run, the senior out of the midfield area, to try to be a little bit dangerous. Out of bounds here on the near side. Quick throw-in by Hale of Quaker Valley. It's interesting where Camp Hill has probably had more chances overall. A Quaker Valley obviously up 1-0. All he needs one, and that's the key. It's got to be a quality chance, and you've got to take advantage of it. Nick Allen has done that throughout the state playoffs. Quaker Valley still putting on the pressure. Cameron Diggins will play it back to Matteo Castellini, far side. Carter Turk. Little give and go touch, but Camp Hill was ready. Good job by Reese Good. 
But now, yet again, Castellini to the end line, and that will be a goal kick. Couldn't quite keep it in play. But the thing that you really have to be impressed when you look at Quaker Valley and what they do, the spacing they have on the field really makes every player accountable defensively for Camp Hill. And Castellini just maybe about a half step away from being able to send that ball into a dangerous area. Goal kick to the midfield by Max Sarf. A couple of players go down. Giving chase and sending that one back towards the midfield was Tanner Schultz. Battisti. Nowhere to go. Good defense by Quaker Valley. Now to the midfield it goes. Nick Allen. Allen. Through ball. And coming out to scoop it up is Max Sarf. And what both these teams are figuring out in the midfield also is you're not going to have a ton of time on the ball. Both teams' teams close things out defensively very well. So when you've got the ball in the midfield area, you need to know what you want to do with the pass and get it out there quickly. Quaker Valley possessing again, but taken away by Camp Hill for the moment. And throw in here for Quaker Valley. Both these coaches when we talked to them before the game, talked about the turning points of their season and how much you can learn from the losses that you have. Quaker Valley team that at the beginning of the season, they went out and played in the East-West Classic. Their first two games lost to Wilson and to Fleetwood. And they learned a lot about what they did. He said slow build pretty much the rest of the season. And to get to this spot, they lost a couple other ones. Avonworth South Park, two outstanding programs who uh, really played great soccer this season but uh, Quaker Valley is the team that in the state playoffs is the one able to get all the way to here Camp Hill was off sides on that last run on the lead pass right there by Benjamin Day looking for Ethan Shamash now far side run and that looked like that was Leachy looking for Kirchhoff and you can see Camp Hill really trying to get, as we have a foul here, the Camp Hill fans are not in favor of that foul called on Cole Nes Nelson. Cole Nelson is a very physical player, though. And he does not look like it. But, man, he, he can – that's something that uh, you'll see no call sometimes. But, I mean, it, it's a foul. It, the position was established by Castellini. And then Nelson came in and knocked him off balance, and it was enough that the official decided that he should blow the whistle for that. But that, that's what Cole Nelson does. He, he, Cole Nelson is going to get in there, and he's going to break up attacks, break up opportunities, and that's exactly the opposite of what Quaker Valley wants to be able to do. They, they want to be able to really get that ball, ping it around, pass the ball over the place, and not be bothered by somebody like a Cole Nelson, who is that guy who's going to break that play up. Oh, here comes Kirchhoff. And a good job to clear out for the moment by Andrew Vecchio. Coach's son that time. Very fortunate that the ball hopped over top of Kirchhoff because put it in a really bad spot. And Vecchio able to clear it away out of danger. And by the way, prior to that run, Quaker Valley was on the attack. And good play by Richard Lutkins to thwart that attack. But here comes Quaker Valley. Good touch here on the near side here, Diggins. Diggins, good footwork towards the end line. Reverses, right foot cross, nobody home. Lutkins is a first-team all-division center back, and that time did a really nice job of getting him, keeping him on that left foot, knowing he wanted to come over to the right, and when he finally got back over to that right foot, the only thing he could do is spray it directly down the line. Out of bounds, throw in upcoming for Camp Hill. There you see J.J. Vescio, head coach for Quaker Valley. Fourth year. Couple of recent state championships, 2019-2021 for the Quakers. Yeah, he was there on the bench for the 1-21 as the head coach. He also was on the bench for them, or actually on the field for them, I should say, back in 2000, I'm sorry, 1999 to 2002 as a player for Quaker Valley. He played under Gene Klein. We'll talk about Gene Klein a little bit later on in this game. But uh, Vescio is, is a guy who is an alum. He's a guy who really understands 
exactly what Quaker Valley soccer is and the pressure that there is in continuing the excellence of this program. And he was able to be part of that 2000 team that tied Fleetwood and shared the state championship that year. Good takeaway on that cross by Castellini. Castellini back with it. Playing it near side to Bennett Haas. Haas. Castellini. Quaker Valley looking for some openings here. Hale. Back to Karwaski. Haas. Karwaski. Tried to send it in, but it was immediately knocked down by Lutkins and then back to the midfield for Andrew Vescio. Vescio skies it. Now we'll just sail over the end line for a goal kick for Max Sarf. But notice there on that last possession, they have the ball on the left side. There's a little bit of room back in the neutral part of the field, but once they get into the offensive third, always seems to be somebody there. And even when they beat one of the defenders, there's an extra guy behind him waiting. So an excellent job of defense for Camp Hill of shutting down a very dangerous Quaker Valley front line. And we just saw number two, Quaker Colin Valley. Benj, coming into the game number for two, Quaker Colin Valley. Benj. Not a ton of subs for either team yet as we approach the midway point here of the first half. PIAA to a boys soccer championship. We had a goal from Quaker Valley and Nick Allen right off a direct kick in the fourth minute. That's where we stand right now. 1-0 Camp Hill in the white. Quaker Valley in the black. Far side, Leachy. Leachy looking for room well marked by Bennett Haas. I want to take away. Nicely done by Karwaski, but then taking it right back is Reese Good. Nice tackle by Good. Out of bounds, though, it will be a throw in. But in the midfield area, again, if you're going to dribble the ball in the midfield area, somebody is going to close on you quickly, and you're going to have to get it off your feet. It looked like Reese Good might have just taken one to the nose. He's going to go down. Yeah, we're going to have to stop this. He took one to. Took one to the face, and then he was holding his nose. This might be a nosebleed. Entirely possible there. And gives us an opportunity to talk about the great late Gene Klein, who was a, a fantastic coach and ambassador of soccer in, in the Pittsburgh area. Six state titles, over 500 wins at Quaker Valley. He passed away this past summer of brain cancer. 33 years in the district as a social studies teacher, retired from coaching and from teaching in 2015. Also was a coach and general manager of the Pittsburgh Riverhounds professional team out there. And Vescio is, is a guy who played for Coach Klein and it, really uh, this summer when, when Coach Klein passed away. Uh, it's just a, a big void in, in Pittsburgh soccer and just uh, one of the greats of all time. And, uh, you know, it, it's... It's not necessarily ironic that this Quaker Valley team is here the year after uh, Gene Klein passes away. But w what an icon of, uh, of Quaker Valley soccer, but also Pennsylvania and Pittsburgh soccer. And a drop as this is sent towards the box. Reese Good off on the bench right now, tending to that nosebleed. We'll see if he comes back into the game. And here's a good tackle by Kirchhoff. Kirchhoff into the open field trying to track it down. And that's sent over the end line by Quaker Valley. This should be a corner. And indeed it is. And that is generated solely by Ty Kirchhoff. And the strength of Ty Kirchhoff. He's got great speed, but watch the power here. He's got a man on him able to stay on his feet. Continues on. And all they could do is just clear that ball away as Sutton Hale sends it over the end line. Corner kick for Camp Hill. It'll be Jack Kennedy. He's, I believe he's taken all of the free kicks and quarter kicks thus far. Low line drive, near side post, into an opening. And it goes to the far side. I saw Cole Nelson with his hands up. I didn't see what he was objecting to, but here's a good pass, top of the box. Deflected for a moment by Quaker Valley. But Camp Hill still hanging around in their attacking third, Kennedy. To the middle. Here's a long ball and it's blocked. Good block by Castellini on that wind up by Lutkins. Kirchhoff cannot control. Hale sends it out. 
And some extended pressure here by Canville on the Quaker Valley goal. We go back to this in into a dangerous area. And really, that ball just landed just in the wrong spot for Camp Hill because it hit a Quaker Valley defender. An opportunity was there, but no one was making that run to that specific area, and the Quakers survive it. And yeah, maybe Cole Nelson was thinking that was a handball. That's why the arms were up. But here comes Quaker Valley. Back the other way, the speed of Karwaski. The footwork, lost it. And letting it go over the end line is Ian Gamber. Got to have a lot of confidence in your guys. And you see Jack Karwaski right there. Had that huge goal against Central Columbia in the semifinal game. The only goal of that match that allowed the Quakers to be here by a one nothing score. But as a coach, you've got to have a lot of confidence in your guys to just say, hey, go out there. I trust you. Go take guys on one-on-one. -on -one. We'll create something. And that's exactly what J.J. Vescio does with his team. It'll be a throw in for Camp Hill. In their defensive third. Baker Valley. Trying to get control and add to their lead. Collision far side. No call throw in here for the Lions. Oh, good ball here. Bennett Haas trying to track it down, but a good play by Gamber to just send it out. But it will be a throw in as Quaker Valley inching down the pitch here. We're going to have substitution at this point. Now Quaker Valley can push a couple more numbers forward as they're going to enter back into the game. Kirill Grill, uh, Kirill Grin, excuse me. They're going to give Karwaski a, a quick breather. Don't expect him to be out for more than about five minutes. Throw in for the Quakers. Cross over the middle. Gamber has it. Quaker Valley still putting the pressure on the Lions. Now played back to the midfield. Schultz. Vescio. Schultz over to Allen. Good touches from Quaker Valley showing patience here. Haas trying the through ball, but a little bit too far looking for Kirill Grin, who just came back into this match. Well, what you love to see from a Quaker Valley standpoint is just the ability to dictate offensively. Let's spread everything out. Let's make some moves against guys one-on-one. -on -one. And from a Camp Hills perspective, you love the fact that they were very settled defensively and very poised, did not dive in, did not overcommit, and forced the bad pass. Camp Hill now with a throw in, trying to get back and into a scoring chance. Quaker Valley controls. Here's Schultz. Diggins. Castellini sends it forward to Allen. Nick Allen, good footwork. Plays it far side, a little bit too far for Kirill Grin. And Camp Hill will get a substitution here with just under 15 minutes to play and even until halftime. Even though Ian Gamber did not uh, get the stop that time necessarily on Allen going down, what his presence did was slow things down where Grin, who was making a nice run on the outside, had to stop his run. Then when Allen's pass goes there, he has no momentum and can't catch up to it. By the way, that was Reese Good coming back into the game Better after the going game out with Hill, the nosebleed. Good Reece to see him good. coming back. He's done a nice job so far. Camp Hill trying to control. Quaker Valley has it in the midfield. Nick Allen controls, plays it far side. Grin moving towards the middle. The touch pass from Haas. Diggins. Good defense by Reese Good of Camp Hill. Quaker Valley still controls. Grin. Hill put it on cage and that sails wide. That was a smart play by Max Sarf to just, he knew the post was there, just let it go, and now it's a goal kick. Well, but it's the first time really that we've seen Quaker Valley since the opening goal test Sark and Max Sarf from distance. And that's an opportunity for Grin. Forced a diving attempt there. 
definitely well wide and surf did well to get his arms down but i'm surprised that they haven't tried a few more things from distance after getting the opening tally that way yeah so far other than the opening goal like you said they've had some good crosses some good opportunities but you're right they have not really tested max Arf. it's been kind of uh, camp hill getting those set piece opportunities with the corners with the free kicks and although again they have nothing on the board they've been putting the pressure on but here is a foul on camp hill Richard Lutkins, the guilty party, and this is a good free kick opportunity right here for Nick Allen and the Quaker Valley Quakers. He, he can get the ball down there. It's just a matter of how high Camp Hill keeps the line. A little too handsy that time from Lutkins into the back of Haas fighting for that ball in the air. This should be a similar sort of thing to the goal, just from a different angle. Allen. Floats it towards the six, headed out by Lutkins and sent back to the midfield by Gamber. Lutkins so good in the air and did well to control his box. Quaker Valley still trying to keep it in the attacking third, keep the pressure on. Good tackle by Reese Good. No whistle, play on. Benjamin Dade. Was looking for one of his forwards, but went right to the foot of Sutton Hale of Quaker Valley. Good slide tackle by Benjamin Dade, but a foul is called. I don't know that that was a foul necessarily. I, that's and that was my first. My first gut was said good slide tackle. Think, Let's no, take a look. I don't think they called the foul. And oh, you're. Yeah, they did not call the foul. Oh, there. I'm sorry. I thought I saw yeah. the direct kicks in. That that's a good play. Dade got ball. Then came through the second foot, got ball again. That's not necessarily uh, gets you in the clear, but that time it was a very good challenge that time from Ben Dade. In the game. Gamber trying Valley, to control. Nine, Jack Karwoski. Sent out, it will be a throw in for Quaker Valley. They've got a somewhat young back line for Camp Hill. You know, you have Benjamin Dade, who's a sophomore, Reese Good is a junior. Ian Gamber is a sophomore. So you got some young players in the back there for the Lions. There's a ball. Let's see if Kirchhoff can track it down. And it's sent out. And it will be a throw in for the Lions right towards the corner. There you see Ty Kirchhoff. And no goals yet from him. But he has certainly had some opportunities and wrecked some havoc. He's got that speed down that left-hand side. And here's a cross towards goal. But nobody making a run that time in front. They didn't recognize that the cross was coming as it was a beautiful ball played that time from Reese Good. Yeah, it looked like it was a short throw and they just played back for the cross from Reese Good. I mean, you had Shamash in the area. Right, but, but it's also a place where your, your center forward has to recognize that there's an opportunity there. Didn't read the play, and when that happens, it's an easy play for the keeper. Here's Ian Gamber, far side, making a run. Nice tackle, good takeaway, Cameron Diggins. Far side, the Quakers possess. Good ball. Karwaski crosses. And... I think that was Benj, who was not quite there. Benj is a guy who is dangerous off the bench. You see him there, number two, a junior who had an assist against Bedford back in the first round matchup for the Quakers. Ten goals, seven assists on the season for him. Leachy's going to get a break here for Camp Hill, and they will return Miller Nelson to the front line. Throwing up coming here for Camp Hill and Jack Kennedy. Miller Nelson. Camp Hill plays it back, dangerous play, and now controlling is Grin. But they communicate very well back there and collect themselves extremely well in that back four for Camp Hill. The one place you might be able to beat him might be on speed. Grin, the high cross, again looking for Binge. And now Hale with it. Tries to play it to the sideline, good battle. Benjamin Dade, good job, and it ends up being a throw in for the Quakers. Now substitution for them, and that's going to take a little bit more time here in the first half. And what we've seen out of the Quaker Valley attack is a very patient attack. 
doing what they do so well, spread the field, work the ball around, look for those openings, but they really haven't been in since that first opening free kick goal. Yeah, if you're just joining us, you, you missed the lone goal. Fourth minute, Nick Allen off the direct. Here's a cross and that will sail high and go out. And a goal kick upcoming for Max Sarf. Not a bad idea from Sutton Hale. And one thing when we talked to Coach Justin Schaefer of Camp Hill before the game, the one thing he was concern, concerned with a little bit was the lack of experience in this type of game for his team. Quaker Valley, a team that just two years ago won a state championship. And whether some of these guys were on the field or on the bench watching and being a part of the experience, they know what it's like to be at this level. And Camp Hill didn't make the, the, uh, the playoffs a year ago uh, in the state playoffs. They ended up with a record of 10-8-1 and one and ended up losing in the first round of district. So they did not have much playoff experience uh, from, from this group in, in regards to the state playoffs. So that was a concern coming in today. And there's Justin Schaefer, very positive, excellent coacher, coaching uh, with this team as far as what he does to motivate them. And this is a team that since game one, when they game uh, ended up Hill, losing their seven, opener, Lorenzo have really Lici. turned the corner. He said that was a, a big eye opener for them. And they understood after that what they needed to do a little bit better. They had to do to, to be better as a team. Yeah, the record 22 and two, losing the opener, losing the district final. and. That's about it, but they are down 1-0 here as the Quaker Valley Quakers out of District 7. You mentioned not a ton of experience, but certainly uh, one of the better programs out of the Whippeal and District 7 as we are under 7 to play here in the first half. Camp Hill trying to find that equalizer. Kirchhoff dispossessed. Far side, Carter Turk out of bounds, throw in upcoming for Quaker Valley. I think Camp Hill has to be pretty happy right now with uh, how they've responded since the opening goal. And I think right now, Quaker Valley has to be pretty pleased, too, the fact that, one, they're ahead, but also, two, they're sort of dictating what type of play that they're trying to get. They haven't gotten the, the great opportunities to score, but right now they're doing what their game plan is and what they like to do as a team on the offensive side. Gamber sends it sky high. Now here is Lorenzo Lici. And we have a takedown, and this will be a free kick here Should be for Camp Hill. Hill. Let's take a look one more time. Oh, got to the ball first. He got to the ball first. The question is the follow through. Did he take down the leg afterwards? Yeah. I've that's that's a, a tough one against Diggins. That's a tough one. It's one that, I mean, those that could go either way, but it really looked like, at least from the angle that we had, there was a lot of ball there. Reese Good skies it over the crossbar. But you had Kirchhoff and Shamash making the run that time. And that's why Just a little bit too high. That's why Good immediately put the, the shirt over top of the head for a moment because he knew that was a missed opportunity. That's that dangerous ball where keeper has to worry about guys running on potentially heading and redirecting something or having the ball go all the way back to the goal like it did for the opening goal of this match for Quaker Valley Lutkins to the midfield Allen the touch over here to Haas nice little pass off the heel from Haas up ahead Diggins on a run cross knocked down by Gamber Quaker Valley still with it, an opening, and a shot, and a save for Max Sarf. Real good shot by Jack Karwaski, but Max Sarf was right there. Put it right on the keeper, though, and Sarf didn't have to move a whole lot. Take a look here, gets it to his favorite right foot. Only space he had to get that away as Kennedy was coming, and Sarf was able to knock it down. Leachy the through ball, and a shot to save. Kirchhoff had a step. And a diving save by Nathan Pribick. And that's how quickly Camp Hill can hit you on the counter. It's that speed. Watch Sarf. He's going to get everybody up the field. The ability of him to be able to punt the ball long 
is very important here. Gets the ball up. Bad touch. Here's Leachy. Has the opening. Kirchhoff getting in behind and gets a shot opportunity. Big time save from Pribic. Beautiful through ball to Kirchhoff. And that's Camp Hill soccer in a nutshell right there. What they like to do offensively. Get the ball into those midfields. Send the ball quickly and then get it out wide and use that speed of Stramash over on the right and especially Kirchhoff lately on the left-hand side and see if they can create. Foul called against the Lions, so it'll be a free kick here for Tanner Schultz and the Quaker Valley Quakers. Headed out of bounds by Jack Kennedy. We'll do it all again. Hale the throw in. Haas gathers. Looking for Hale. Hale does come up with it. To the middle. Still looking. Good defense. And then sent to the midfield. That was really nicely done by Cole Nelson of Camp Hill. Cole Nelson and, and another great defensive play there by Nelson. And you keep looking if you're an offensive player, you're looking, hey, where's the foul? And, and you realize there wasn't one, but you're begging for one because he just seems to always win those challenges. Out of bounds off Nelson. It'll be a throw in for Quaker Valley. Yeah, you're right. I mean, he, those are both clean challenges right there. You get to the ball and a great job. Leachy, oh, a little bit high, but he was able to avoid it. And here's a ball all the way going to the far side. Kirchhoff giving chase. He tracks it down before the end line. Kirchhoff reversing the right foot, the cross. Shamash had a head on it and it's cleared out. Camp Hill still with a chance in the attacking third. It goes back to, oh, and a takedown and a no call. J.J. Battisti went into the air. All clean, says the officials. Yeah, I, I, I would agree with that call as well. Battisti with the swing on the follow through went over top of the defensive player who had position. Karwaski with an opening, and I believe we had a whistle before that. Offside. Might maybe. have been offsides. Here's back to the header inside. Allen clears it for a moment. Ball comes back in. They try to play it over, and an excellent job of scramble defending. Here's that shot. Ooh, maybe there if there was a beef <laughs> there. And that would have been a very dangerous free kick opportunity game. where that ball was played for Camp Hill. Under a minute to go. Camp Hill looking to put on the pressure, try and get the equalizer before halftime. Leachy goes down, no call. I believe we're in that portion of the game where let's call it they're gonna let them play. We've seen a lot of no calls both ways. Where it, it's it's a tight but the determination by the center referee is that there's just not enough there to blow the whistle. Haas making the run. He will cross. Nobody home except Reese Good for Camp Hill, and he clears it out to the midfield. You know, it's the back side. It's the, the left back coming all the way over to clear that ball. That's an excellent move from Bennett Haas. Had his man on his back and was able to spin and go forward. Turk sends it out of bounds. That should just about do it here. Five, for the first half, four, quick throw in by Camp Hill. Handball, but it doesn't matter. At the half, it's Quaker Valley leading Camp Hill 1-0 thanks to an early goal by Nick Allen. We'll take a timeout. When we come back, we will recap the first half and get you ready for half number two. You're watching the 2023 PIAA 2A Boys Soccer Championship here on PCN. sets the table for November with the PCN Feast, exclusively on PCN Select. The main course is select Keystone Cuisine. 
Learn more about the turkey with PCN Tours and the Pennsylvania Farm Show. For dessert, an order of shoe fly pie. The PCN Feast Collection, for free, only on PCN Select. PCN is everything Pennsylvania. PCN brings you the PIAA Championships in a variety of sports. From the field, to the pool, and the court, to the track, PCN brings you the best scholastic teams competing on the state's biggest stage from all the best angles. With multiple cameras, instant replay, and professional commentary, we take high school sports and elevate them to new heights. Watch on cable and the PCN app. PCN, proud to bring Pennsylvania sports to you. For over 20 years, PCN is proud to honor Pennsylvanians who served in the United States military. Starting with World War II veterans and continuing through those who serve in today's conflicts, PCN brings you the stories told by those who were there. Join us for the oral histories of Pennsylvania's military veterans with Voices of Veterans. PCN is Pennsylvania history and culture. For over 25 years, PCN is proud to bring you exciting moments of Pennsylvania sports. From touchdowns to double plays to the butterfly stroke, PCN brings all the action right to you. PCN is a 501c3 nonprofit television network that receives no state or federal funding. Please consider a tax deductible donation today. PCN is Pennsylvania sports. PCN depends on viewers like you and your generosity. PCN receives no tax dollars. Please consider donating today. Go to PCNTV.com and help PCN continue to bring you the best in Pennsylvania sports. Welcome back here to Eagle View Middle School alongside Brian Kaiser, Amari Bluestein. 1 0 at the half as Quaker Valley leads Camp Hill here in the 2A Boys Soccer Championship. And as we take a look at some of the highlights, we had a lot of action both ways, but the goal was scored very early on in this one. Yeah, we had a quick opportunity for Camp Hill on a cross, but after that, there's a foul about 35 yards out from goal. And immediately upon that, Nick Allen over a charging Max Sarf, and that ball just in that sweet spot ends up going over top of his head for the only goal of this first half. That was with less than four minutes gone by. Some opportunities for either end, some free kick opportunities like that one for Camp Hill, and you had a couple shots that were close, sprayed wide. You, you saw Reese Good be somebody who crossed the ball a lot in that first half and give Camp Hill some opportunities. Here's a great shot attempt from Jack Karwaski. But really, uh, it, it was this being the best chance for Camp Hill right here, a ball that came out of the midfield. And just This is how Camp Hill plays. They want to get the ball quickly down the field on the counterattack, get the ball wide, and Ty Kirchhoff forcing a sprawling save from Nathan Previck to keep Camp Hill off the board in half number one. So looking ahead to the second half, Brian, you, you've seen some really good things from Camp Hill. You've seen All some right. good opportunities Let's from Quaker Valley. Really, really uh, an evenly played My match. Jason. What do you think you're go we're going to see here coming up in the second half? I think you're going to see more of the same from each of these teams. I think you've got two veteran coaches right now who understand that this is not the time to panic. You've got a one nothing game. There's a lot of things could happen. J.J. Vescio right now trying to pour his guys very emotionally right now, explaining to them, uh, here's the way that we're going to get another one and to try to put this game away. And that might be enough if they can get that second goal. For Quaker Valley, 
I think some opportunities, especially as this game goes on, if they continue to be patient, continue to work the ball around, I, I, I think maybe if they can move the ball a little bit quicker initially when they get the ball in the offensive third, they might have more chances. For Camp Hill, they have to continue using their outside play. They went almost exclusively left in that first half, maybe a little bit to the right, and see if Shamaj can uh, get involved as well and give them a little bit more balance. Great crowd on hand here at Eagle View Middle School. We'll come back with the second half. You're watching the 2023 PIAA 2A Boys Soccer Championship here on PCN. Few things in life are more important than showing up. And whether you show up for your family, friends, or teammates, it doesn't hurt to bring a plate of their favorite beef dish. Together, we bring more. Find your next crowd pleaser at beefitswhatsfordinner.com. For 25 years, PCN and the PIAA have partnered to bring you the State High School Football Championships. 25 years and the best teams and players from across the state have participated in the PIAA Football Championships. You can catch a future star on PCN. Join PCN starting on December 7th for three days, totaling six live games on PCN Select and on cable. PCN is Pennsylvania Sports. Do you enjoy sports, history and culture, and politics and policy? PCN wants you to be part of our team. We have full and part-time positions waiting for you. For more information, go to PCNTV.com slash careers. Be a part of PCN. PCN is everything Pennsylvania. For over 25 years, PCN is proud to bring you exciting moments of Pennsylvania sports. From touchdowns to double plays to the butterfly stroke, PCN brings all the action right to you. PCN is a 501c3 nonprofit television network that receives no state or federal funding. Please consider a tax deductible donation today. PCN is Pennsylvania sports. The 2023 PIAA Football Championships are live on PCN and PCN Select starting December 7th at 1 p.m. and continuing through December 9th. Got some great games. Always a fun weekend. PIAA Football. PIAA Football is fantastic. We've got soccer. It's a weekend where there's volleyball, field hockey, and you can find all of that stuff on your PCN network. Yeah, PCN, PCN Select. And we've got a good one here. Only our second game of eight here this weekend at Eagle View Middle School. And the Quaker Valley Quakers out of District 7, they're in the black uniforms. And the Camp Hill Lions, they are in the white out of District 3. And, you know, the score is 1-0, but probably Camp Hill overall had more chances, more good scoring chances. It's just a matter of continuing to test Nathan Pribick, and we talked about it right at the top. These are two very good keepers. That goal given up by Max Sarf, very surprising and unlike him. And Pribick has really made, come up with some good saves as well, including that run uh, by Ty Kirchhoff. Well, it, but the one thing Camp Hill, and this isn't necessarily their game either, but what they haven't done with Pribick is test him from distance either. They've had some longer free kicks, but they, they haven't taken those long distance shots and tried to put them on frame. We haven't seen that. It's not something that's necessarily a strength of theirs, but maybe they might have to mix that in a little bit in the second half to keep them honest. Just about ready to go. Half number two. District three versus District seven. Now we know how competitive District seven and the Whippeal uh, is, but when we talked to Coach JJ Vescio, he said, "Look, we play a ton of District three teams uh, in non-league play. We know how tough District three is, and 
you know, Coach Justin Schaefer, same respect for this program of Quaker Valley, just a perennial contender here at the state level. Yeah, no question about that. And if you're Fleetwood right now, who's beaten both of these teams this year, you're sitting at home going, what happened to us? But they ended up getting not, and that's the nature of the PIAA playoffs as we're underway here in the second half. You came into the semifinals of the states, and not a single district champion was left in double A soccer at Fleetwood, and ended up getting knocked out on penalty kicks to Blue Mountain. So Camp Hill now moving right to left. They're in the white uniforms. Quaker Valley now moving left to right. Good run, by the way, by Cole Nelson, but it was knocked down by the Quaker defense. Now Karwaski looking up ahead. He's got Grin. Grin surrounded by defenders, gets past. Stops at the end line. And a good battle, good challenge by Lorenzo Lecce of Camp Hill. And the guy who really set that whole thing up, Reese Good did a fantastic job of defending Grin 1v1 in the box. And that shot sails wide by Ben Haas. And it will be a goal kick for Max Sarf. And Reese Good has really had a very solid game so far. Some dangerous balls sent into the box on free kicks, but also you've seen him in help defending when the ball comes down that left-hand side. He is very quick to get in there in the middle and help out as Camp Hill tries to really make sure that they have defense in numbers. Kirchhoff, oh, look out. Into the crowd, good hands. <laughs> Not a souvenir, unfortunately. No, you don't, <laughs> don't get to keep those. I don't know that there's any level that you get to keep the, the soccer balls. It's not a baseball. It's a little, <laughs> a little more expensive to pay for those. Reese Good. Kirchhoff, can he track it down? He cannot. Not a bad idea. And this will be a goal kick for Nathan Pribick in Quaker Valley. And trying to get that ball wide continuing to get that ball wide and it forces the defense then to stretch out a little bit more and creates openings where you can get guys to run in between make runs between defenders and hopefully get a good cross Leachy battling far side now Quaker Valley with possession will play it back Andrew Vescio to the midfield knocked down by Benjamin Dade and a good play by Andrew Vescio to send it sky high to the midfield. Gamber. Now headed back by Schultz. Gamber trying for Kirchhoff, but that pass cut off. Now back the other way. Gamber gets to it first. For Grin. Could track it down. Now out of bounds. It will be a throw in for Camp Hill. Wow. Kirchhoff did very well, not just to get back to that ball, but he immediately put his hand up. He did a good sales job on the official because I thought he was the guy who touched it last. And so did uh, a lot of the Quaker Valley players and fans. But certainly tough to tell here on the near side. Gamber dispossessed. Up ahead, Karwaski, the through ball cross, but coming off his line, nice job by Max Sarf before Bennett Haas could even get there. When you have Gamber as center back come up dribbling and then gets dispossessed of the ball like that, it immediately gives an opportunity the other direction. Camp, Camp Hill did well to defend, but Quaker Valley was looking immediately. They recognized that opportunity and quickly went on the counterattack. Out of bounds, throw in far side, Quaker Valley. Quakers trying to add to their lead. Taken away by Cole Nelson. Now tracked down by Nick Allen. Diggins. Being shadowed by Benjamin Day. Now with it is Camp Hill. Reese Good was looking for Miller Nelson. Near side battle, Gamber. Comes up with it, but he cannot keep it in as he was battling with Kirill Grin, and that will lead to a corner kick for the Quakers. 
Let's see what they come up with here because Allen's going to be the guy who puts this one in play. You see Grin working against Gamber and just that consistent pressure forces the poor touch at the very end from Gamber. Nick Allen. Looking for a head of a teammate, but a good job on the back line by Richard Lutkins of Camp Hill. Lutkins is their guy in the air for Camp Hill. He's the guy who does such a great job of controlling the box. You see him right here get position. He's on the inside. Times this jump perfectly right in front of his man, Matteo Castellini, coming on the back side of that play. Yeah, pretty good corner kick right there by Nick Allen. Another look from our goal cam. Beautiful job by Luckins. Well played. And all you're looking for in a corner kick is an opportunity to make that run into a dangerous area and see if you can win that one-on-one -on -one battle in the air. But Luckins, as he has so many times this season for Camp Hill, is the guy who gets up first. So now Camp Hill trying to reverse fields. Leachy. Up ahead to Nelson. Nelson trying the through ball for Kirchhoff, but it was touched out of bounds by the Quakers. He took a little bit of a, an in-between touch that time, and it threw him off balance. So he knew the only thing he could try to do was to try to play that quick through ball, and it ends up getting in traffic, and they still win the corner. This is where they've got to push guys a little bit more forward. Throw it for Reese Good. He was looking for Leachy, but headed right back out by Andrew Vescio. Quick throw in here, Reese Good trying to control. Leachy with some space, crosses Dade from distance and that sails high above the crossbar. And, and that's the kind of shot they may have to start taking a couple more of these. Maybe to pull this defense out a little bit more too. The drop back, they weren't worried about Dade, but unfortunately for Camp Hill, he couldn't get it on frame either. One of, one of the few places Camp Hill has had room as the defense for Quaker Valley has been very tight once they get the ball into the box. Foul called, I believe, far side on Karwaski. Free kick here from their defensive third for Camp Hill and Richard Lutkins. Castellini the header. Allen. Looking again for Karwaski and letting it go out of bounds was Lutkins. Both teams have had chances here early on in the second half. You had the corner kick on Quaker Valley side here on the right side of the pitch and Camp Hill has certainly had some chances as well. A foul there called against Quaker Valley. So Reese Good's going to get an opportunity to send the ball forward. It's a little bit long for them to get a real good opportunity off of the free kick as a shot, but he can send it pretty deep. That is pretty deep. That's into the box, and coming off his line and having to make a play was Pribic with Shamash right there. Not enough guys making a run at the ball, though, for Campo. Did you notice that because of how far it was, I, don't, I think he kind of surprised everybody that he was going to be able to get the ball as far as he did. Kirchhoff. Crosses. Good defense by the Quakers. Kirchhoff gets it back and blocked down by Quaker Valley. Great defense on that attempted run, but now Schultz his pass a little bit wide of Karwaski. Now working it to Shamash, right side. Cole Nelson kind of sandwiched through Shamash, prize it free. Some space. I think the Camp Hill fans just want the Lions to take a shot. Gamber taken down, and that's going to be a direct kick for Camp Hill. This is going to be a dangerous opportunity for Camp Hill, but nobody able and willing to pull the trigger here. There's that foul from behind. As Karwaski just recognizing, grabs a hold, and actually didn't grab a hold. Ends up clipping him from behind, but definitely at, uh, forced Gamber to the ground. So an opportunity here for Leachy. Lorenzo Leachy. He had definitely some chances for Camp Hill on that last little series, but you're right, nobody wanting to pull the trigger. The wall is set up for the Quakers. Leachy. And that's going to sail way high and over the netting into the parking lot. Is that your car back there? 
Hope not. Okay. Because <laughs> he got all the way back there as Leachy knew what he wanted to do. He wanted to put that ball in frame, but he's got too far underneath it. He got it over the wall, but a little too far over the wall. And Pribic with the goal kick. So we've seen it. Camp Hill has had some chances. They've had some good touches. They've had some good free kick opportunities. How about that off the heel from Leachy? Kirchhoff winds and then is blocked down. Looked like that was Andrew Vecchio it who was. got front, yes. And Vecchio did a great job of recognizing Kirchhoff, wants it on that right foot. He stayed on that right foot, allowed him to come down with the left, as you see here, bringing it over to his right. And Vecchio reads that, gets in it, steps, blocks, away it goes. No pressure on the keeper. Throw in far side for Quaker Valley. It seemed like this second half is starting to get tilted to the left in favor of Camp Hill's attacking third and Quaker Valley. Obviously, if you're the Quakers, you've got the 1-0 lead. You'd love to get a second goal on the board and secure this lead. Here's a shot, and that sails high and wide. Well, when you look at what Quaker Valley's done so far here in the second half, it's been really a very tentative second half on the offensive side. Really, they've done a lot of defending here. It's a more desperate Camp Hill team being behind it. The one thing you've got to guard against is being too comfortable with a one-goal lead. You never can be really overly comfortable with that one-goal lead. And, and Camp Hill is still continuing to ask the questions here in half number two, trying to get equal. Gamber sends it far side for Shamash. Shamash trying to settle. It's knocked away and played all the way back to Privick. Dade knocks it down at the midfield. Good battle between Leachy and Diggins. Haas controls far side for the Quakers. Karwaski tried to track it down out of bounds. Throw in for, I believe it will be for Quaker Valley, yes. And the touch by Nick Allen, but Lutkins just lets it roll over the end line. Goal kick here for Camp Hill. There you see Jack Kowalski, really electric goal scorer. And he's had some chances, but for the most part, the Camp Hill defense has done a good job against him when he's making those runs and on those through balls down to Kowalski. There, there really have been a lot of great quality chances here in this game for Quaker Valley. The, the opening goal notwithstanding, but really we haven't seen any of those where Sarp's had to make really any great sprawling saves. There was one by Karwaski that was ripped right at him, but other than that, really this this Quaker Valley attack's been pretty, pretty quiet as we see the foul here. And that is definitely at the last second Castellini gets in there, and that's that's a foul where you're slowing down the action anyway. You're worried about a, a counterattack, a quick uh, change of direction there by Camp Hill, and slow everything down and get our defense back where they need to be. Reese good, skies it, got a chance, coming off his line and punching it out is Nathan Pribick. And he got over the head of Lutkins, who's so good in the air, and he needed to get over top with the hand. Grin making a run down the near side. 1v1 with Gamber. The cross in front, knocked down by Reese Good. And sent into the air by Cole Nelson. Lee Chi couldn't settle. Nick Allen. Bennett Haas far side. And now Quaker Valley controlling. Just a little over 14 minutes gone by here in the second half. Our lone goal came in the fourth minute by the Quaker Valley Quakers, Nick Allen. Some good touches here, a little bit short on that pass for Grin. And sent out of bounds by Kirchhoff. Ty Kirchhoff, he's been electric today. Yeah, and he's relentless too. That's the other thing about Kirchhoff that's so difficult to really play against is he is continuous energy. Every time the ball goes to him, you're thinking, well, he can't have another run in him. And he never comes out. So it's run after run after run. And he is just absolutely relentless in his attack. Gets a touch again. He'll play it back to Reese. Good. Good. Sends it into the air to the midfield. Leachy battling with Castellini. 
Leachy battling now with Haas, and Haas gets to it first and will play it back to Schultz. And that deflects off of Hale. Benjamin Dade with it. Kirchhoff can't quite settle. Back to Dade. Dade. Nice slide tackle. Great job by Diggins. And then Dade commits the foul. Yeah, fantastic work by Diggins. Just staying very, very poised in front. Stands up his man. And then at the opportune time, you see him dive in there with that slide. And Dade, a little bit of frustration that time, reaching back in and just stabbing at it and called for the foul. Free kick here for Andrew Vescio. There you see Benjamin Dade. He's playing a nice game. Again, a young back line for Camp Hill. Benjamin Dade, one of those young guys, only a sophomore. It's also a young back line, all underclassmen on the back line, starting for Quaker Valley. So this is a team that defensively, there's a lot of firepower coming back to keep balls out of the net, and they've done so well at that this season. Leachy towards the end line, and it will be a corner kick. What a run there at the end by Leachy, and that extra effort just to tool that one off of the oncoming defender to win the corner. Look at the effort this time. Around Schultz, good move there. Probably the best technically skilled player in terms of the open field dribbling, and then knocks it off of Sutton Hale for a corner. And in the game for Camp Hill, number 24. Looks like it is Jack Kennedy to take this for the Lions. They're crowding the keeper this time. This is a different look. Skies it, looking for a header, and it's headed wide. That was Lutkins who got up, and they did something different that time. They put everybody in close inside the six around the keeper, and then you play that ball a little bit further out front. It allows Lutkins to adjust backwards and get clear of his defender, but just couldn't put enough on it to get it directed on frame. Yeah, I mean, it looked like it, it was not a bad look, but you're right, it just went a little bit wide. Meanwhile, the goal kick for Pribic is very low. Into the middle, across, a touch, shot, go! Tied, Kirchhoff! And we're tied in one here in the 2A Boys Championship. And the mistake on the goal kick, not getting very far, and you see Pribic feels horrible about it. He could do nothing about the shot, though. But credit Camp Hill for being awake on that goal kick. Watch it here, it goes out low, and when it comes back, Leachy down the middle, plays the ball over, and Cole Nelson making that run, gets this pass deflected, and makes no mistake about it, Ty Kirchhoff goal. Number 30 of the year, we're tied up at one. A mistake by Pribic, but the beautiful passing by the Camp Hill Lions. Tie this game up at one apiece, and you kind of knew it was only a matter of time. I just had that feeling with Camp Hill. They just kept knocking at the door, getting set piece opportunities, good touches, good passes, and right there, they finally get a pass privilege. Knocking on the door, but where did the play come from? They went wide, but they were able to get it into the middle, and for one of the first times in this game after playing it wide, they got 14, a touch on the Ty inside Kershaw. that this allowed them 10, to set up that final pass, and that is Nelson being able to, to thread that through just enough to Kirchhoff, and Kirchhoff, as he's done 30 times now this season, makes no mistake about it. So now we'll see how the Quakers respond. They've been up for a majority of this game. And really, Camp Hill has controlled possession for a majority of this contest. So you look at Quaker Valley, and we know that they have some really good players up front, really good players in the midfield. What do they need to do to create more scoring chances? Be them, and they haven't been so far. And I think that goal, more than anything else, now forces them to be more what they have been all season long. They almost were playing tentatively like they were worried about protecting the goal as opposed to attacking. And this is a team that really I know they are a very good defensive team, but man, they can score some goals. They put up over 100 during the season. This is a team that can score. They have to look to do that. And really, we haven't seen as much of that since they took the lead, really. They, they have been very dormant on their offensive attack. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, I think they've only had one corner. They've had some good 
set pieces, some good directs, but uh, you're right. I mean, it's been Camp Hill who has just been keeping the pressure on, but the Lions have the momentum, so that's really going to be interesting for the final 20 minutes here of the second half. Do the Lions continue that momentum, or like you said, do the Quakers get back to what got them here and get some more scoring chances? This should be a very interesting final 20. At least final 20. We'll just keep it at final 20. <laughs> <laughs> but, this, hey, this is a very oh, no. evenly matched championship game. It, it has been. When we came into this game, it's exactly what we looked at. Two teams where some of the things that they each do match up well with what the other team does. Well, here's a good job by Castellini. Gets to the corner, puts on the brakes. And it'll be a throw in for the Quakers. Quaker Valley in the black, Camp Hill in the white. Thank you for joining us here on this Championship Friday live from Eagle View Middle School here in Mechanicsburg. We've had a good one. 2A Boys Championship. Game two of eight here this weekend on the pitch. Karwaski, that's a goal kick. Just too many white jerseys. Well, in, in trying to dribble, 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 but there's nowhere to go. And Camp Hill continues to do a great job of being patient defensively, not stabbing, standing their player up, and forcing them to make the mistake. As Reese Good, you saw him number 17 on the screen again. He's over there as part of that defensive effort and has had a very strong game. Off the goal kick. And Reese Good will just let that one roll out. Throw in for Good. Castellini. He's been very active here over the last few minutes. Finds Nick Allen. Allen, inside the 18. Good takeaway by Gamber. That was Nelson tracking all the way back that time. Oh, check that, I'm sorry, wow. You're, you're, you're right, Cole Nelson is really all over the field, he, isn't he? <laughs> he? He just absolutely box to box, and a guy who just, he, he was on the assist, on the Camp Hill goal, and there he is all the way back in his own box, tracking the most dangerous player on the Quaker Valley sign in Nick Allen. Yeah, that's why I thought it was Gamber all the way back. Gamber is the center back. Quaker Valley continuing to put on the pressure, and you like to see this. They're putting some passes together. They're staying aggressive. Really the first time that we've seen this in a while. It's the correct response. They raised the level of play immediately after Camp Hill scored. You saw a difference in how they started attacking things. Now the question is, can they put something together? The takeaway by Nelson. Leachy. Plays it far side. Good chance going forward here. Kennedy was looking for Cole Nelson crashing at the 18, but sent away to the midfield by the Quakers. Good battle here between Nick Allen and Richard Lutkins. Shamash has it for Campbell. Now to the midfield, Leachy. Leachy up the center. Nice job. Yet again by Castellini. Hey, we, we've got a couple of guys who play a defensive midfield role. I know Cole Nelson is not officially a defensive midfielder, but I mean, basically, that's the type of position he plays more than anything else. Oh, we've got a little extracurricular activity right in the middle of the field. Karwaski is given a yellow. They're both being given yellow. As is Leachy. And, you know, sometimes it's whoever pushes last gets the card or gets the penalty, right, or the foul. But this time, good recognition by Todd Fisher, knowing that it was it took two to tango. Well, One more look. Let's let's take a look at this. First of all, Leachy from behind, and then immediately Karwaski gets up and stood right into Leachy after that play. Was not happy with getting knocked down, understandably so, but you can't do what he did there. Probably fortunate that that was only yellow. Yep, and then not shown was Leachy pushing Karwaski back. There is Justin Schaefer. And and he's going to get an explanation of what happened there because I think he saw exactly what I saw, which was you had a player stand up and basically more or less it looked like it could have been a headbutt. Maybe it was because he was stepping and immediately stood up and, and walked directly into the player and it was inadvertent but it's one where I know Coach Schaefer is looking at in that regard 
as Mark Anthony Azoilio comes into the game for Camp Hill. Had an assist on the goal against Northwestern Lehigh. Got one more look here, Mark pushing Anthony the back. And, and no question, a foul and a cartable offense. But that's the play that you have to be careful with because that is a direct endangerment. Well, after all the paperwork is filed, it'll be a direct for Nick Allen and Quaker Valley. So a good chance for the Quakers to respond. You see the clock was stopped with the two yellow cards being issued. And some explanations to the coaches. Let's see if they try to go near post here and make the run. Nick Allen. Good ball to the middle and it's headed wide. Oh man, yeah. that was Andrew Vescio who had a chance to give the Quakers the lead yet again. Only one goal on the year for the junior center back. This one could very well have been two. He must have just missed that one on the side because the view we had initially. Oh my, we, wow. I think we've got a goal cam back there too. There it comes. I knew our crew would be right on that one. Oh wow. Wow, that close to being two to one up for camp and for uh, Quaker Valley. And first off, beautiful ball by Nick Allen off the free kick. And no one ran with Vescio on the backside, and that's the concern for Camp Hills. We're gonna have another dangerous play as now Cole Nelson called for the foul. Castellini's the one down for Quaker Valley. Let's take a look. That's yeah, that's a foul. It's, it's definitely a foul. Yep. And, and considering the type of run and also the fact that we just had two yellow cards given out. That's also one I've seen many times be given a yellow card as well. So Colt Nelson probably fortunate right now that, that he stays on the pitch. Because that was definitely a foul with the intent to slow everything down and stop whatever play was going on. So Nick Allen will take this direct again. Line drive, nobody home, goal kick. We had a little collision in front inside the box and that helped camp hill because it stopped anyone from being able to make the back post run and that's where the ball ended up being played wide of the mark so sarf didn't have to worry about anyone coming on or having to stop the ball from going in his net nick allen right there for quaker valley who's played well today has the goal for the quakers and very nearly an assist on another one quaker valley continuing to put the pressure on we'll have another foul call Against Camp Hill, this is on Reese Good. And, and it's the right call because Good's behind the play. Grin makes the run. Watch where he is positionally. And he extends the, the shoulder and the body from the behind. So when you're behind on that play, if you're even, you can claim shoulder to shoulder. When you're behind, you can't. And now this is where Nick Allen really can be dangerous. Third direct for Nick Allen in the last three minutes. Little conversation from the officials. That's Todd Fisher. And th this is a good job by Todd Fisher and our District 10 officiating crew right now because you've got both teams in a 1-1 game. Things are getting chippy, much more physical now. He wants to step in and make sure that this is clean. Towards the net. Headed up into the air by Reese Good. Great job defensively. Mark Anthony Ozilio making an impact coming into the game. Throw in here for the Quakers. And I think everyone, here's the free kick once again, and it was Reese Good getting up before anybody else. Wasn't a lot of pressure right at that spot though either. The last few opportunities have sort of Fizzled for, camp, for uh, Quaker Valley. Good slide tackle right there by Benjamin Dade. I think I saw a, a shin pad go flying. And here's a shot, and it just goes wide from Kirchhoff. From distance, put it on the ground and almost stuck, snuck it in here near side post. When you are a hot scorer, you are looking to take shots. And here's the drop off. And here's Kirchhoff just seeing a little bit of a crease, and he didn't miss that one by a whole lot. 
as he comes down the middle of the field. With Leachy out of the game, they have Kirchhoff playing right now in that center forward position. And that's where he really made the run from to score the goal earlier. And now another dangerous opportunity. Allen. Far side. Good play by Jack Kennedy to get in the passing lane, knocking it away from Colin Benj, who's back into the contest for the Quakers. And then we'll have another throw in here for Quaker Valley. 12 minutes to go in the second half. Early goal by Nick Gallen of Quaker Valley. And a second half goal by Ty Kirchhoff of Camp Hill. Cross towards the 18, looking for Haas. And a good play by Gamber to dispossess. And he sends it to the midfield. Kirchhoff up ahead, but plenty of time for Privik to come off his line and out of the box. And needed to be off his line because Shamash was making the run on the right-hand side. Kirchhoff made a great play being able to get it around the unrushing center back. So the keeper needed to get out of his box, off of his line, and Privik exactly where he needed to be to clear it. Andrew Vescio for Quaker Valley. And that will go all the way down for a goal kick for Max Sarf. Remind us that PIAA championship games are the exclusive property of the PIAA. Television coverage is licensed to PCN, whose exclusive rights are protected by federal copyright law. Any trans retransmission of any kind or other use of the television coverage of this game without the express written consent of PIAA is prohibited by law. Lorenzo Leachy back in. Good minutes by Ozilio. And Karwaski back in Jack as Karwaski. well for Quaker Valley. Yeah, both of the yellow cards are back into the game. They have to serve five minutes over there on the sideline. Cooling down period. Once they are back in the game, they pick up another one. It is a red card then at that point. So they have to be at least somewhat careful towards the end of this game. Under 10 to play here in half number two. Two programs that have been here before. We've got a little bit of experience on the Quaker Valley players' side. But two really good programs out of two very good soccer districts. District 7 and District 3. And two coaches and coaching staffs that have won championships before at the state championship level. Kirchhoff battling with Vescio. Gamber gets to it before Karwaski. Now Cole Nelson, far side. Great footwork. Oh, and the through ball. Great defense by Castellini, now taken back. Cross. Good job knocking that down by Tanner Schultz. You had Kirchhoff right there waiting for the cross. And then Lutkins with two hands in the back. That shove is enough to stop play. If he gets away with that one, Camp Hill has an opportunity the other way. No choice for the official in that play. You've got to make that call, and he does. Quaker Valley settles it down again. And I, I love the fact that right now they're still staying patient, staying true to what they do. Possession, soccer, get the ball wide, try to find those openings in the defense. You know, on that right side, I was about to say Shamash, but it is Quinn Di, Di Cavalcante who's back, who's into the game actually for the first time. Is that right forward for Camp Hill. Quaker Valley losing possession. Camp Hill has it. Reese Good, all with the giveaway. Quaker Valley with a chance here, but a good job by Gamber to come over and take it away from Kirill Grin. Always seems like for Camp Hill, that next defender is always there lurking. You get by one of them, the next guy always seems to be there. And there is a bit of a takedown by Kirill Grin. He was behind, trying to catch up. Used the arms to do so. 
That's a pretty obvious <laughs> right-handed shove there. Free kick here for Reese Good, all the way back in Camp Hill's defensive third. <laughs> Leachy. Settling with Carter Turk right on him. Quaker Valley dispossesses. Oh, a great play by Karwaski. Karwaski trying to do it himself. He's taken down, and that will be a call against Camp Hill. Whistle definitely, against Reese Good. Definitely going to get good there as uh, Karwaski. Some outstanding individual skill there. And at the very end, you can see Good seeing him split defenders. Here he is out rushing Good to the ball. Flips the ball over top of the on-rushing Gamber, and Good, in recovery, knocks him down. Dangerous direct. The only positive here for, for Camp Hill is that it's an outswinger for Allen. Very right-footed on these free kicks, but he can pick out whoever he wants to. Allen goes back post. Save! <laughs> Max Sarf gets the save to keep it tied. Beautiful ball by Allen. I didn't see who got the touch on it right at the goal mouth, but Max Sarf with a potential championship saving save. My goodness. Yeah, backside, Lutkins went for it, missed it, and then that was Schultz who had a big goal for this team. The game winner against Shadyside on a similar situation on a corner kick in that game, but Sarf gets the right hand to it and swats it out. Great ball, and you're right, it went over Lutkins, which is not easy to do. And then Schultz, a great header, but great reaction time from Max Sarf. That's been the improvement from Max Sarf. Yeah, a goal game like he gave Camp up at the Hill, beginning four, of this game Nelson, in the number 20, last year Ethan may have Schemach. absolutely destroyed his confidence, but you can see, still, very confident. Knows he has a strong defense in front of him and knows that at some point he's going to have to make that big save and does so there. Corot Grin to the center. Nick Allen plays it near side. Carter Turk with space. Reese Good closes out. Turk with the left foot towards the box, headed out by Gamber. Castellini. Puts on the brakes right at the 18, plays it back to Turk. Turk will bend it, back post coming out and grabbing it is Max Sarf. And good thing he did because there was a runner there far side, and I believe that was Karwaski. But much better offense right now from Quaker Valley. Oh, yes. And, and what they're doing at this point is they are definitely asking some questions right now, and they're doing it by getting the ball wide and sending the ball, searching into the box and seeing if there's somebody who's going to be able to make that run at the end of it. There's another chance for the Quakers. Allen plays it back out wide. Grin. Around good, and a whistle will be called against Reese Good. Maybe seeing some fatigue here also, Ari, for Camp Hill on the back line. They've had to play very hard, especially in the last 15 minutes or so of this game since the goal was scored to tie this contest up. And now we're seeing some of the things that they didn't do earlier. Things where they were standing guys up. Hands on hips right now. That's a sign of fatigue. Hey, if you're playing 80 minutes of soccer, you're going to be a little bit tired. Those back line guys just do not come out very often. So now all of a sudden it's trying to hold your will right now with 4.07 left to go here in regulation and get at least to the end of regulation time. Another direct kick for Nick Allen and Quaker Valley. Can they cash in? Low cross and it goes out and last touched by a Quaker will be a goal kick. They're going to say Bennett Haas who was making the near post run that time and that's a play where if you have the near post run if you're on the back post you can't stop the back post run. You've got to keep going. Watch this ball go into a dangerous spot, flicked back back side. If somebody is on that back side making that delayed run, there's an opportunity. Instead, it goes wide. Ball's played back to Pribic. Pribic sends it to the midfield. Castellini. 
50-50 ball one right there by Lutkins of Camp Hill. And Quaker Valley, since the equalizer from Camp Hill, different they've team. just been a different team. Different they, team. They, they, much better, a lot more set-piece opportunities, a lot more push into the attack. And here they are now with a good slide tackle. And now they'll have another throw in here. This, I'm sorry, this will be a kick right at midfield. Benjamin Dade went in late on that one. They're not going to get the card, though. You can see this one as Dade. And that's an example of a guy getting the ball clean, but the follow through, he gets the, the cleat. And because of that, foul is the uh, correct call there. Everyone wants to say, he got ball, he got ball. Yeah, that time he got ball. He got ball first, and then he got man and stopped the play. Actually, I don't even know if a foul was called because there was a throw in. Okay, let me help you. I, I think there was a foul. <laughs> 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 Whether they called it or not. <laughs> Quaker Valley putting the pressure on. They've had some chances. Haas the cross. And Reese Good is right there marking Kirill Grin. Did not hesitate either. Quick step in front of Grin. By the way, that's a great play by Carter Turk to get around the defender in the midfield. Grin, good footwork with some space. Now to the center. The official was kind of caught in the middle, but still a chance. Karwaski, the touch inside the box. And cleared out by Gamber, but another good series of touches from the Quakers. This team is so much better when their outside backs become part of the attack. Castellini on the attack, inside the box, slipped down and cleared out to the midfield by Camp Hill, but it's not out of the woods yet for the Lions as the Quakers will have a throw in, continuing to put the pressure on. Pressuring, 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 and all of a sudden you're seeing Carter Turk become more of a force joining the attack from that right back position seeing Sutton Hale on the other side be more of an uh, an option on the offensive end in possession that's when they become dangerous because now you've got more guys you've got to defend one minute, play, really. one minute to go in regulation here in this championship game battle at the midfield Gamber has it. Oh, and that's going to be a handball. It came up and hit Gamber's hand on the way by. And this should be probably the last opportunity for either team here in regulation. So there's Gamber. It comes up, hits that right hand. Chance for Allen to send one more in. Nick Allen, one more time. And headed out by Lutkins. 20 seconds to go. Can Quaker Valley get one more shot on Cage? Good battle here near side. Great win that time for Miller Nelson. A Seven. forward all the way back helping out. It's not over yet, four seconds. Pass and shot, side, Gwynn takes a shot and it's knocked down. And we are headed for extra time here in the 2A Boys Soccer Championship. This has been a good one, don't go anywhere. Overtime coming up between Quaker Valley and Camp Hill. You're watching the PIAA 2A Boys Soccer Championship here on PCN. Because, two syllables, seven letters, so much meaning. Because is an explanation, an answer to the question why. It connects where we've been to where we're going. And at Highmark, the road ahead is altogether new. We are reinventing healthcare because it can be simpler, smoother, because it can do more. Get ready for healthcare that goes beyond care because life. Highmark Blue Shield. Student athletes in high impact sports are at high risk for severe injury and more likely to be prescribed painkillers. One in 15 people who use prescription painkillers will try heroin within 10 years. Join PCN as we journey towards the 2026 semi-quincentennial of the founding of the United States of America. 
Semi-quincentennial? That's 250 years. PCN celebrates the momentous occasion and Pennsylvania's significant role in our nation's founding. Enjoy new content on PCN Select and on cable. Go to PCNTV.com for more details. PCN is Pennsylvania history and culture. PCN is Pennsylvania history and culture. From the founding of our nation to the struggle for freedom and equality. Listen to the words of authors as they discuss Pennsylvania and the people, places, and events that relate to the Commonwealth. Celebrate our diversity. Embrace the past as we look to the future and be a part of building our nation. PCN is Pennsylvania History and Culture. Did you know you can watch all of your favorite PCN originals and more at home or on the go? Download the PCN app on your favorite device and tune in to see what makes Pennsylvania's heart beat. Watch videos on demand, see multiple live streams, and check out the free selected programs and events. PCN, Pennsylvania politics and policy, history and culture, sports, and more. It's that time of year again, when footballs and pumpkin spice fill the air and Thanksgiving is right around the corner. Give your friends and family the Feast of Pennsylvania with a donation to PCN. You'll be supporting programming bringing you the best in Pennsylvania sports, history and culture, and politics and policy. Go to PCNTV.com to support PCN. minutes not enough here in the 2A Boys Soccer Championship live from Eagleville Middle, Eagle View Middle School here in Mechanicsburg alongside Brian Kaiser, Amari Bluestein and tied at one and uh, Brian how did we get to this point it's been an action-packed game with a lot of scoring chances well let's watch it because there was a foul in the fourth minute and then after that Nick Allen finds a way to put that past the keeper Max Sarf for the opening goal of the game and that was our score all the way into the second half. Campbell just kept asking questions though. And then on a on a poor goal kick, here's Leachy, finds Cole Nelson, makes a great assist to tie Kirchhoff. Kirchhoff's 30th goal of the season. And for Nelson, his 20th assist. Those guys have been playing together for three years on the front line for Camp Hill. But after that, Quaker Valley had a few chances. Andrew Vessio with a header just wide. And then we had one more opportunity on a free kick. Nick Allen wreaking havoc with those. Ball comes in front and knocked away by Max Sarf off the head of Tanner Schultz. And we have our score at one to one between Camp Hill and Quaker Valley. What a fantastic double-A championship this has been so far. This has really been a lot of fun. And you saw the way Quaker Valley responded. And I just think this can go either way. So, uh, Brian, why don't you tell our viewers a little bit at home what to expect here for overtimes, with how, how long are the overtime periods, and when do we get to the vaunted PKs? Well, during the regular season, they have 10 minutes of overtime. And when we hit the playoffs, that's not the case. So we're, we're in the middle of that five-minute break right now. They flip a coin. They've already done that to see who's going which direction. And then we put 15 minutes on the clock, 15 minutes for sudden victory. If you score, game's over, state title is yours. If you're tied after the end of the second period, then we go to penalty kicks. And we've only had that one time in the history of the PIAA Boys Soccer Championships, and that was two years ago when this Quaker Valley team won in PKs over Lewisburg by a final of five to four was the championship there. It was one nothing is the official score. They went scoreless the entire game. I don't know. I, I just don't feel. And remember, it's 15 normally. It's 20 minutes. They've added an extra five minutes on. So it's 15 in the playoffs, but it's 20 minutes of each overtime period here at the state championships. They want a winner on the field, not with PKs. And that is certainly the way you want to go. You want to have a goal in regular play. And 
from what we've seen, Brian, so far today through the first 40, I just feel like one of these teams will find a way to put one in the back of the net. Just so many scoring chances all game long. There have been chances for each team. Now fatigue sets in. The question is, who is ready for their moment? Who is ready to step up and be that hero for their team? And the other thing that you hope doesn't happen but happens many times because of fatigue and because of the pressure in this situation, you're talking about 14 through 18-year-old high school students and the pressure sometimes and sometimes a mistake is what ends up giving that last opportunity to win a championship. So you hope somebody earns the goal here in overtime. Opening minute, free kick opportunity. Nick Gallon, low line drive, and that is headed high over the crossbar. But a good ball from Nick Allen, and Carter Turk had a chance at it. Had a goal earlier in the playoffs against Bedford. This time he's up front, going on that near post, rubbing the head afterwards, because every time you've got an opportunity to score in the overtime, you know that it potentially could be a, a championship winning goal. Max Sarf with the goal kick. Reese Good, I believe we, have, we had a handball. The adjustment that was made by Coach Schaefer of Camp Hill was putting Kirchhoff in the middle of the field. And that has made Camp Hill a little bit more dangerous up the gut. Led to the goal. Also, they had another decent chance in regulation that way. So we'll see if they continue with that because Leachy now has moved up to the left side at forward. Reese Good sky high towards the 18. And cleared out by Quaker Valley. Quaker Valley Quakers out of District 7. They're in the black jerseys. The Camp Hill Lions in the white jerseys out of District 3. Both of these teams lost their respective district championships, but they are the ones that have moved on here to the state final. Quaker Valley does not have a tie this season either. They are 20 and four overall. Camp Hill has a couple of times. So they have played overtime a few times this year where they have continued to just hold sway. One of them is maybe one of the most important games for making this team believe that they could make the state championship game run against Lewisburg, a perennial power in double A from District 4. Leachy with some space. And Let's go, might have been looking for Shamash, but it goes right to Nathan Privick. And J.J. Vescio has done a really good job of settling his team since giving up the goal and getting them back focused on what they need to do. And that, that's play the type of soccer and attacking soccer that Quaker Valley does. They have really been much more dangerous since that goal was given up. And now uh, we have a game where really we're going a little bit more end-to-end -end than we did at one point. And a battle here at midfield, and Karwaski called for the foul. And... Remember, Karwaski has to be careful already with the yellow. One more look here. Yeah, you can see that swim move. Put the right hand up top and try to check that left hand up top and try to pull Gamber, seen by the official. I think these officials have really done a very nice job today overall. Reese Good sends it towards the box and cleared out for the moment by Quaker Valley. Our officiating group today from District 10, Dave McKnight, Todd Fisher, and Aquileo Huntington. Started getting really physical after Camp Hill got the equalizer and the officials did a good job of trying to keep everyone in check. They stepped in at the appropriate time, settled the game back down and we got back to playing soccer again. Grin makes a run. Against Gamber. Gamber, good defense, good, has it, may have run into his own player. Actually, it will, no, it will be a foul. And one more look here. Yeah, Gamber gets the touch, but coming from behind, as we've seen so many times, how many times have we said today that Camp Hill always has that extra defender behind? There's Reese Good backing up Gamber. Ball goes away from Gamber. Good cleans it up and gets clipped. Free kick. Reese Good to the midfield. Good job by Quaker Valley. Karwaski can't get past Lutkins. Shamash moves to the center. Knocked down by the Quakers. Should have a chance here on the counter. 
Karwaski pushes it out far side to Haas. Nick Allen. Trying to get around the defender. Now plays it out wide. Grin. Grin splits the defenders inside the box. Makes a move towards goal shot and it sails high above the crossbar. But good footwork from Kirill Grin. The senior with an outstanding work around Reese Good. And we've seen a little bit more opportunity for him as the game has gone on. Good little stab there at the end. And then Gamber. Allows him to get over to that left foot. Just couldn't keep that one down as he was a touch off balance going towards taking the left footed shot. Campbell trying to clear but cannot do it. Castellini and now set back to the midfield. Couple of good touches from the Quakers. Far side stays in. Haas, he will cross it. And letting it go was Sarf. And here's Grin in the corner, trying to get around the defender. Keeps it in play. The cross in front, and Sarf has to come down and knock it down as making the run right on goal is Cameron Diggins. Diggins with an outstanding read on the play, put himself in a great spot, and Max Sarf, for the second time since the equalizing goal, has been up to a very tough uh, play there in front of the net. Yeah, really, Quaker Valley has dominated the scoring chances since the equalizer by Camp Hill. And now we will have a free kick, free kick yeah, for Camp Hill. Reese Good's taken a lot of these so far today. Sends another one sky high towards the 18. Looking for Kirchhoff. Kind of whiffing on that was Nelson. Shamash fighting with it. Inside the box. Now Nelson has it. Letting it go by. Playing it back to Gates. Leachy knocks it down. Kirchhoff trying to wind. Can't get enough on it. Still not clear though. Quaker Valley desperately needs to get this out. Leachy was looking for Kirchhoff. And it does at least get out of the box for now. And now here come the Quakers. Looking to counter. Diggins. Puts on the brakes to the center. Haas crosses nobody home. Oh, and it's sent straight up by Kennedy. Camp Hill still can't clear, and that's a wind, and that shot was blocked as Karwaski had a chance at it. Karwaski took a big swing at that one, drilled it directly in the body of Richard Lutkins. Across the top of the box. The touch. Good defense by Leachy. Camp Hill looking to counter. Kirchhoff. Center of the field. Gets around a defender. Tries the through ball, but it's not there. Good defense by Carter Turk. Now back the other way. This is end to end. And yes. You know, what this is going to do more than anything else, and that is a smart play by Sarf back in the Camp Hill net. Let that ball run all the way through. Let your team catch its breath right now because we've got a little bit of end-to-end -end action where each team recognizing as soon as they get a stop, you've got an opportunity to counter on the other end and take advantage of a team that might have numbers forward. Goal kick by Sarf. Battle in the midfield. Cole Nelson looking for Kirchhoff and it's sent out of bounds by Andrew Vescio. Throw in upcoming for Reese Good and the Camp Hill Lions. We saw previously J.J. Vescio, and there's Justin Schaefer, the two coaches. You know their nerves are going right now. Out of bounds, and it will be a throw in for Quaker Valley. Quaker Valley, odd numbered years. 2017, 2019, 2021 have won state championships. Can they make it four odd numbered years in a row if they can pull this one out? That is an interesting trend. Was not lost on Camp Hill's head coach either. That is a goal kick. They do not give the foul that time. So good defensive play there for Andrew Vessio against Lorenzo Lici. One more look here. 
Yeah, they missed that one. That was definitely. <laughs> now, what they might say is that the ball was already headed out before right. that, and that's why they didn't give the kick. But definitely uh, got the ankle on the way by. Yeah, I think if you're in overtime of a championship game, you better be sure that it is a foul in that close to the 18, right easier, outside the box. Easier not to give that one than yeah, that. To exactly. Get it wrong. Exactly. Quaker Valley looking to put some pressure on. They've done a great job of creating scoring chances. Inside the box, good defense by Camp Hill. I believe that was Lutkins again. But now Castellini has it. Gets around a defender. Karwaski. Castellini again. A lot of patience from Quaker Valley here. Grin, just outside the 18, Gamber on him. Seeing a few more tired step-ins from Camp Hill, some desperation tackling that we didn't see earlier in regulation, or at least until the very end of regulation. It's a tired defense right now. Well, Quaker Valley has certainly put on the pressure. Clean tackle, Jack Kennedy out of bounds. It'll be a throw in for Quaker Valley. You just feel, it, after you watch Karwaski and seeing him get into different places, if they can put a ball on his foot with an opportunity to take a strike, he might just have something in that right foot to end this one. It's just a matter of finding their leading goal scorer in the correct spot. <laughs> throw in awarded to Camp Hill. And a giveaway by Nelson on that cross. Now it's sent to the midfield by J.J. Battisti. Nick Allen has it back for Quaker Valley, and that is going to be a goal kick. That was a good through ball looking for Karwaski. And Corner. really nothing Lutkins can do. Yeah, Lutkins heading to play that over the end line. He could have taken the chance that his keeper was up there, but played it safe that time. Was not 100% sure, so he plays the ball out and relies on their ability to defend the corner. Nick Allen will take it. He's taken all the set-piece opportunities for the Quakers. Header goes back out and just sent over the concession stand by Benjamin Dade. Still not out of the woods yet. No, Camp certainly Hill. not. There's a good cross in front. Watkins again with a headed cross, or a headed clearance for the Lions. Quaker Valley continues to attack. Now they're starting to make people miss in the offensive third on those individual 1v1 moves. Play it back to the midfield. Schultz out wide, Hale. Schultz was looking for Castellini to maybe make a run, but on one bound settled by Max Sarf. And how about Max Sarf, who we talked about it, gave up that early goal. Since then, has come up with some really good saves and some really good keeper play. And, and his positioning has been very good since that time. Yes, it was a mistake right off the bat, but he did what exactly what you expect your senior leader to do is step up and then adjust your play and recover from it. Learn from the mistake. Kirchhoff, sky high, Leachy not going to be able to get to it out of bounds. It'll be a throw in for Quaker Valley. Anytime you think you're tired right now, you look up at the clock, say it's 1-1. This is a state championship game. If that doesn't energize you, really not much can. Nick Allen finds Jack Karwaski, plays it out wide. Grin gets past the defender. Grin. Oh, he lost possession. Can't get around Gamber. Gamber wins the battle and then the jersey pull in frustration from Kirill Grin. Well, he beat good on the initial move and then Gamber comes over. He tried to nutmeg him. And when that didn't work out, that's when Gamber was able to turn with the ball and Grin ends up grabbing. And no, there's really no danger back there where they are for a free kick. Reese Good had that free kick for Camp Hill, but possession 
to Quaker Valley for the moment, and then a little bit far, Nick Allen was looking for Carter Turk here on the near side. Substitution, Shamash is out. I believe that is Ozilio coming back in. Yes, it is. Mark Anthony Ozilio, the junior midfielder. Ethan Shamash out. That was a, a tough ball for Lutkins where he couldn't wait for the ball to really get down and, and settle itself. So he ends up having to play it over the near sideline into the offensive third. Couldn't play it back to his keeper, it was too close. Couldn't really play it down too easily because he had pressure on either side of him. The intelligence of playing safe though in that spot. Good touch. Quaker Valley with a chance inside and that will be a goal kick as Cameron Diggins just lost possession. He's been a lot more dangerous here since the goal for Camp Hill. He's been somebody who's getting forward, making some key runs, and that one, he's just a half a touch away from being able to turn the corner. Just about three and a half to go here in the first overtime. Leachy, Dade, Ozilio, was looking for Kirchhoff, but well marked by Quaker Valley in the back line of the Quakers. Hale intercepted Ozilio. Haas with the takeaway for Quaker Valley. Threw ball up ahead, looking for Grin. Gamber getting to it first. And we'll just let that go over the end line. Nice play by Ian Gamber. A beautiful shield that time. Grin fighting him the entire way, very physically trying to get around him, and Gamber would have none of it. Shoulder to shoulder, has the advantage there, uses his body, continues to be in front of the defense the offensive player, and wins the goal kick. Quaker Valley still putting on the pressure. McAllen will settle, plays it here to the near side, Karwaski. Karwaski looking for Diggins to make a run, but coming off his line is Max Sarf. But if Sarf doesn't get it off his line, that is a beautiful bar from Kar Karwaski. Diggins had the backside run. He had it available to him without a quick reaction from a, a, the goalkeeper. Battle in the midfield, sent away by Battisti. been a game of possession so far where Quaker Valley got the first goal. Camp Hill controlled a lot of the possession. Then after the equalizer by the Lions, it's been pretty much all Quaker Valley putting the pressure on the Camp Hill defense. Yeah, they have definitely turned, turned the screws a little bit since that time. Look at the crowd right now. That is a huge throng here at Eagle View Middle School. And they are being treated to a classic here in the AA championship game. Certainly been an entertaining game between Camp Hill out of District 3 and Quaker Valley out of District 7. Throw in far side for the Lions. Ozilio. Nelson trying to touch Kirchhoff and Ozilio can't get there. Good job by Nathan Pribick to come out and grab it as we're under a minute to go here in the first overtime. If we get through another 50 seconds, we'll put another 20 on the board. After a brief break, as both teams will switch ends. This is a tough play. That's just that in-betweener right yep. inside the box. You had Haas right there, but a good job by Sarf. And, and also a good job by Lutkins, recognizing, notice his body position, allowing his keeper to come up and shielding Haas away from being able to get in there. Dade, Leachy, perhaps one more run here for Camp Hill. Leachy can't get to it. Good job on the slide by Vescio. Vescio, I think, cramped up after that. Eight seconds to go. He's going to shake that off. That should do it. 100 minutes in the book. Not enough to determine a champion here at the 2A level for PIAA Boys Soccer. 
like Brian just said. Put another 20 up on the board. We'll be back here on PCN. A PCN Select subscription is more than a single championship. It's a year of Pennsylvania sports. PCN Select is a great value for all seasons. Previous PIAA championships, sports profiles, inside the lines, PA books about Pennsylvania sports, and PCN Sports Classics, all on demand. Check out PCNTV.com for more details. PCN is Pennsylvania sports. Here to Eagle View Middle School, and yes, we are still playing the 1 p.m. start time of the 2A Boys Soccer Championship here in the state of Pennsylvania, alongside Brian Kaiser, Amari Bluestein, and you know we're tied at one. And sometimes when you look at a game that's tied and we're in double overtime, you know maybe not that much excitement. The teams aren't really getting scoring chances, but that's quite the opposite. This has been an exciting game for the entire 100 minutes. And what you hope does not happen has not happened here. And that is two teams, you get to overtime and people are playing not to lose. That's not the case. These two teams, both in that overtime period, Quaker Valley having the better of it for a lot of that overtime. But both teams looking to create opportunities to attack and to do the things it's going to take to win the championship, not just to back into it. Now, we talked about it with the early goal from Quaker Valley. We saw Camp Hill really dominate possession. They were the ones with the scoring chances. They kept knocking on the door and finally got the equalizer about midway through that second half. Since then, it's been all Quaker Valley the last 15 minutes or so of the second half. And then the entire overtime, really for the most part, was in the attacking third for Quaker Valley. So I guess I'll ask you, what's the key here for both of these teams to try and come up with a goal and avoid going to penalty kicks? When you're in the first overtime period, to me, it's the team that continues to stay true to themselves. When you hit this last 20, if you're not going to go into penalty kicks, I honestly think most of the time this is somebody on either side being ready for their moment, being ready to make that one championship play. So many times it's one guy who just digs down just a little bit deeper because everybody out there right now is gassed. Everyone's tired. Uh, you've got guys who are cramping a little bit at this point, but everybody knows what's on the line. And that's when you look to your senior leaders, you look to your stars, you look to your guys who all season long, when you've needed a big play, they're the ones who step up in that moment. Who's going to be that guy for each of these teams as we're underway? Well, we'll find out here. Final 20 minutes of gameplay. Second overtime here in the 2A Boys Soccer Championship. The Quakers out of Quaker Valley, District 7, and the Lions out of Camp Hill and District 3. This has been a good one. And we'll see if someone can put one in the back of the net within the next 19 and a half before we get to penalty kicks. Last time Camp Hill won a state championship was back in 2017. They won in overtime over Cardinal World North Catholic 3-2. to two. Last time that Quaker Valley won a championship a couple years ago, 2021, beat Lewisburg in PKs. 5-4 uh, was the final in that one. So... These teams most recently, when they've won a state championship, have done so in extra time. So Quaker Valley now moving right to left as the team switch fields here in the second overtime. Ben Haas puts it right on Max Sarf and Sarf handles it. And he's also imploring his crowd right now who he's in front of to try to get them going at this point. Big crowd for both of these sides and Ben Haas got it to his favored right foot. And now making a run down the side. And a collision here near side. And a foul is called. Jack Kennedy a little late that time. And Bennett Haas getting a little bit of extra energy. 
Put that one right at the keeper, and this time he's got a half a step, and that's enough. And again, we've said this a lot today. Behind, you're going to get called for the foul. And that time, Kennedy was a half a step behind. Another direct kick opportunity for the Quakers and Nick Allen. He's done a really good job on these set pieces, giving his teammates scoring chances. Allen bends it in, header high and wide, and a chance for Matteo Castellini. And he was open. Nobody stuck to him. They were looking for him to make a run, and he stopped. Watch what he does here. Ball comes in. He stops, gets there in front of Dade, and the ball goes just high over the bar. So a couple of good chances for the Quakers. Goal kick here for Max Sarf and Camp Hill. Team that looks like it has maybe just a touch more energy right now, too, is Quaker Valley. Maybe because they've been on the front foot for a lot of the time since the Camp Hill equalizer. Haas, good ball for Allen. And that goes over the end line, last touched by Battisti and Camp Hill, and that will be a corner nope, kick. They are calling that, so oh, this I'm is sorry. an overrule. The official in the middle of the field ends up making the call here, and this is why. Here comes the ball, and it was clipped off of the left foot of Allen out of play. Was not seen by the official on the far side, but a center referee saw it, overruled it, and now Allen, he's cramping up at the end of that run. Yeah, the initial call that I saw was um, Huntington on the outside, but it was Dave McKnight with the overrule. Yeah, I thought it was close, but... The other, the other people, not just the players, have to be up to this moment. And this officiating crew has also been up to the moment so far. Agreed. Great job by them out of District, District 10. And Allen is okay, stretched out, back on the field, ready to go. That was Dave McKnight who you just saw. Here's a good ball. On sides, Leachy, shot, save, and diving on it is Nathan Primick. And perhaps the best scoring chance for Camp Hill over the last 30 or 40 minutes. Leachy didn't want it on his left. He wanted to come back to the preferred right, so he goes all the way to the middle of the field, fires a low shot that Primick not only saves, but keeps the rebound close enough to him because Ty Kirchhoff was ready to finish it on the backside at just a step away from being able to get the rebound. Watch this again. Great through ball that time. Believe that was Nelson on the through ball. Here comes Leachy to the inside, puts it to the right foot. Didn't get to see the, the shot, but it was a low one that really created things. And here comes Camp Hill again. Shamash here on the side, and we're going to have a whistle, a foul against Quaker Valley. Here is the last look at that shot by Leachy and the save by Pribic. And notice, rebound control. So important because the first guy to that rebound was going to be number 14, Ty Kirchhoff. And the foul here on the field was against Bennett Haas. So now a free kick opportunity for Camp Hill. And now Allen's going to have to go out. He's not able to continue right now. We'll get some fluids in him, stretch him out, and see if he can come back in in a few minutes. Yeah, we saw he had that cramp on that last run. And Grin's going to come back yep, in. Kirill Grin, yep. So Reese Good, well, here's one more look at the foul. Haas, just a little pull of the jersey there. If you get the jersey and you extend away, they can see that easier. Reese Good, the line drive, back post, and making the run was Battisti, and Camp Hill very nearly had a very good scoring chance. He was obstructed just enough. Watch at the end of this play, Battisti coming down, number nine, that's helping out on the back side. It's Karwaski. Karwaski, and Battisti couldn't get in position. You're not going to get that call in this moment either. Somebody's going to have to either score or have a really blatant penalty opportunity for that to be called. Waker Valley trying to clear here on the near side. A couple of good touches. And good lead pass here on the near side for Hale. Sutton Hale. The touch for Grit. Hale has it back. Right in the corner. 
staying in play. I thought Hale was going to play that and try and get a corner kick. Never did, though, and they end up getting a throw in nonetheless. Great job just keeping the ball over on this side, looking for an opening for Quaker Valley. Diggins gets past the defender. He'll cross in front, knocked down, and it's deflected off of a line. No, it's going to be a goal kick. And all, all three officials were on that one. All three officials saw the same thing. Now they are on headsets too, and they're going to switch who's in the middle now. So Todd Fisher's going back to the middle in the three-person officiating system that we use in the state of Pennsylvania, at least as far as the championship games are concerned. So there he is right now, man on the spot, and the yellow is Todd Fisher. With 13.40 and counting left to go. We are in the second overtime. Through over 106 minutes of soccer here in the 2A Boys Championship in the state of Pennsylvania. Laker Valley controlling. Andrew Vescio. Now with it is Gamber for Camp Hill. Looking for Leachy. Leachy. Settles, trying to get around the defender and make a run to the outside. Gets past one defender and knocked over the end line and it will be a corner kick. Quaker Valley saying it was deflected, but it was not and this will be a corner kick. One more look here, Leachy. Didn't bring the ball with him initially and you can see that was a slide there by Carter Turk and it last touched him and went out. Set piece opportunity. For Camp Hill, have not seen them a ton here in the overtime periods. Kennedy skies it, and it goes through! Gets the back of the net! Richard Lutkins. Lutkins gets the header to win it. The Camp Hill Lions, after going down 1-0 early, come back to win it 2-1 in double overtime to capture the PIAA 2A Boys Soccer Championship. The second goal of the season for Richard Lutkins is a golden one as he runs middle of the box, sets a little pick for somebody, and then goes to the middle as that person ran front post. The ball was sent to the middle, and a beautiful cross by Jack Kennedy to find him for the championship. We'll come back and recap this wild 2A Boys Soccer Championship. One more look as Kennedy, the corner, and it's put in just barely off the head of Richard Lutkins. We'll be back to wrap things up. Camp Hill knocking off Quaker Valley. You're watching PIAA Soccer here on PCN. For over 20 years, PCN is proud to honor Pennsylvanians who served in the United States military. Starting with World War II veterans and continuing through those who serve in today's conflicts, PCN brings you the stories told by those who were there. Join us for the oral histories of Pennsylvania's military veterans with Voices of Veterans. PCN is Pennsylvania history and culture. Tired of unbalanced views and networks pushing their own angles? PCN brings it to you straight. We don't edit what was said to fit a point of view. We bring you the entire event. No slant, no editing, the whole story. A complete view without the angle. Watch PCN on cable and on the PCN app. Stream politics and policy on your favorite device for free. For less than the cost of a stylish coffee, you can support PCN and our programming. With your donation, you help bring Pennsylvania's history and culture, politics and policy, and the best of Pennsylvania sports to all of the Keystone State's residents. Please consider a monthly gift to help PCN continue to be everything Pennsylvania. I'm Dave Williams, your host here in Pennsylvania Country Roads. Come join me as we travel throughout the countryside of Pennsylvania, places that you love to see, the people you love to meet, and of course, the many wonderful things that go on in our state. All this and much more every Sunday morning at 7 a.m. on PCN TV.
Experience communities in action through lively and in-depth discussions on Inside Pennsylvania Boroughs. Join host Chris Cap and his guests as they discuss important and timely issues from around the state. Gain valuable insight as experts share their thoughts on topics that matter most to you and your family. Get inspired to make a difference in your community by tuning in to Inside Pennsylvania Boroughs on Sundays right here on PCN. Slam dunk, home run, touchdown, goal. However you score, do it with PCN, bringing you sports coverage every season. Watch live and stream on demand. With coverage this good, you'll be a part of the action on cable and the PCN app. Celebration for Camp Hill and their fans as they win in double overtime, two to one. And now it's time to give out our Lebanon Valley College player of the game. And you know, Brian, we talked about it. There's a lot of really good choices, but in the end, you got to go with the man with the golden goal, and that is Richard Lutkins. Played a great game defensively for Camp Hill, controlling the air, but here's the one that matters. And here's a great look from our crew from the behind goal cam. What happened on the play was Lutkins set a little pick for Batisti, and as he did that, that defensive man went with Batisti. It left Lutkins open in the middle. Nobody went with him. He's open in front of the goal, and the execution of the corner, Camp Hill wins the championship, two to one. Heartbreaking for Quaker Valley. What a fantastic year they had. The player of the game is sponsored by Lebanon Valley College, listed number one in Pennsylvania for job placement, Lebanon Valley College. A great game played, phenomenal. If you were watching from opening to the finish, one more look from our goal cam. Lutkins finds the back of the net. And heartbreak for Quaker Valley, but a great season for them. First, and we will now turn it over to our PA announcer to give out our medals and trophies. Ask Coach JJ Vescio to present the medals. Number four, Bennett Hawes. Number 10, Cameron Diggins. Number 31, Nick Allen. Number six, Kirill Grin. Number 15, Aiden Carver. Number 17, Mikheo Castellini. Castellini. Number one, Nathan Pribic. Number two, Colin Benj. Number seven, Matthew Henry. Number nine, Jack Kowarski. Number 16, Elliot Thompson. Number 21, Andrew Vescio. Number 24, Carter Turk. Number zero, Xander Vescio. Number eight, Sutton Hale. Number 11, Isaac Williams. Number 12, Patrick Connors. Number 13, Corbin Hopkins. Number 14, Liam Miller. Number 23, Levi Carver. Number 26, Tanner Schultz. Number 32, Asher Muratish. Number five, Charlie Pyle. Number 18, Will Meager. Number 50, Julian Tees. Number 20, Aiden Dwyer. Number 25, Arik Severson. Number 27, Hugo Castellini. And number 28, Kyler Hoffman. At this time, we would ask representatives from Quaker Valley, Nick Allen, 
Bennett Hawes, and Cameron Diggins to come forward and accept the 2023 PIAA Class 2A Boys Soccer Runner-Up Trophy. Congratulations, Quaker Valley. Now let's meet our champions, the team from Camp Hill. We would ask head coach Justin Schaefer to present the medals. Number two, Jack Longenbach. Number five, Owen Durr. Number 28, Michael Bordner. Number three, George Miller. Number four, Miller Nelson. Number eight, Barrett Spitzer. Number nine, Colin Murphy. Number 15, Ian Gamber. Number 19, Sam Stahl. Number 20, Ethan Shamash. Number 26, Richard Ozulio. Number 26, Aiden Finord. Number 30, Benjamin Dade. Number 32, Keith Barnes. Number 38, Nash Luther. Number 40, Owen Melham. Double zero, Lucas McAuley. Number one, Evan Sparks. Number seven, Lorenzo Leachy. Number 13, Ian Lentz. Number 14, Ty Kershoff. Number 16, Liam Brinkenhoff. Number 17, Reese Good. Number 21, Quinn de Cavalcante. Number 25, Mark Anthony Ozulio. Number 33, Jack Bender. Number 35, Blair Trogner. Number one, Mac Sarf. Number 10, Cole Nelson. Number 11, Jack Kennedy. Number 12, Peter Gaudian. Number 22, Richard Lutkins. And number 24, J.J. Battisti. At this time, we would ask representatives from the Camp Hill team to come forward and accept the 2023 PIAA Class 2A Boys Soccer Championship Trophy. Congratulations, Camp Hill. The Camp Hill Lions out of District 3 winning 2-1 to one in double overtime over the Quaker Valley Quakers. And Brian, we got treated to a phenomenal championship match. Fantastic game between two very deserving teams to be here. And Quaker Valley just... They, they just weren't able to, to hold on long enough there at the end. They were the team that was really forcing the action there all the way through overtime. But Camp Hill executing perfectly on the corner. It was a fourth-minute goal from Nick Allen to start things off. Then in the 58th minute, Ty Kirchhoff, he equalizes on assist from Cole Nelson. But the game winner is Richard Luckins, the senior center back from a fellow senior, Jack Kennedy, uh, assisting him. 114th minute, and that's the golden goal. Camp Hill third state championship joining the teams in 2016 and 2017. Amazing game. Want to congratulate Quaker Valley on a phenomenal season. And Camp Hill on the 2023 PIAA 2A Boys 
Soccer Championship. So for my partner, Brian Kaiser, I'm Ari Bluestein saying so long for now from Eagle View Middle School. We've got more championship soccer coming up next. You're watching the PIAA Soccer Championships here on PCN. PCN and the PIAA, bringing the best of high school athletic championships to you. PCN and the PIAA are Pennsylvania sports. For over 25 years, PCN is proud to bring you exciting moments of Pennsylvania sports. From touchdowns to double plays to the butterfly stroke, PCN brings all the action right to you. PCN is a 501c3 nonprofit television network that receives no state or federal funding. Please consider a tax deductible donation today. PCN is Pennsylvania Sports.